Yeah, that's what I thought. There we go. I gotta, <laughs> I, I gotta, I gotta rearrange so many things. It's gonna be great. Should I pull up? Should like, is there gonna be a chat? Should somebody watch the Twitch chat? Uh, I have it on OBS, but if someone else wants to also be there right now, currently the only one I know for a fact is commenting is Mel Melowit. Um. That's the name Mellow minus the W. You had at like etiquette, and then there is a um, underscore at the end because someone else took her name on OBS, and she is still salty about it. And I have heard her say that so many times that I can now spout that off about uh, needing to read it. Cool. All right, we're gonna keep it very plain for this we have no, we have no uh name uh plates because i didn't have time to make them because oh. no one sent me artwork <laughs> so there's no Literally tokens it right now i'm so sorry no i was name. busy it's not your fault literally i asked everyone to send me a piece of artwork to make their tokens for and no one sent me anything but don't you have to send it in messenger here? two of you Did talked you? at once so i didn't go ahead leo <laughs> Did you send it in Messenger? Because I would I would not have seen it. Potentially. I have no idea. I'm gonna I'm gonna still send guilt to all of you guys. Do you want sure. it now? It doesn't help now. I'm not gonna make tokens while I'm okay. trying to also DM this <laughs> shit. <laughs> to be fair, I'm really re I don't art. So either A, I would need someone to design one for me, or B, you just uh, get a really crappy image no, that I pull off the internet. We don't, I'll we get don't, to it. We don't I steal, had two events in two weekends. <laughs> we don't steal internet art for streams, because that's how we get in trouble. Um, as what happened in many a D&D community member recently, so we're not going to do that, for one. Two, um, I would have sent everyone like a doll creator. The only person who I know we probably couldn't have really made would have been... Uh, Dennis. He's the only one who I'm like don't think we can recreate him on anything. <laughs> um, Sorry. If someone wants to if so, if someone with far more artistic talent than me wants to draw Evie, I will happily for a token, I will happily throw money at them. Yeah, we're right that's already being done. Uh, I'm paying Natalie done. to make fire arc art, but that is something that again, doesn't matter. Either way. I sent I, I sent the sketch, didn't I? I'll send I it again. Don't think so. Either way. Hi, people who are potentially watching us. This is uh, the way we talk, and I'm so sorry <laughs> it took us 20 minutes to just say hi to you guys. <laughs> but this is probably what you can expect. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are no symbols and no special stuff because we are waiting a bit to get all of that together. There will be nameplates, tokens, and probably some fanciful accoutrement in the future. For now, for this session zero, uh, there's not even closed captions, so so sorry about that. We'll try harder next time. Um, this is the uh, group for the Fire Arc, uh, also known as Team Blaster. Um, we're going to go around the circle, let everyone introduce themselves, uh, their names, uh, pronouns. Um, you guys can introduce your characters too if you want, and then also um, uh, where people can find you for anything in particular. So if you do cosplay, artwork other things you know uh shut yourself out do you want to um, do shout outs at the end Vinny? just so they're not getting like a wall of 15 minutes of us talking about ourselves no but i mean you can easily quickly just say like where it is people can find you, you don't have to Fair like enough. give all the details at the end people can do longer shout outs as needed uh but quickly um i'm Vinny or vander he him pronouns i am the dm and i play everybody that these people aren't playing basically that's the easiest way to sum it up right here and right now <laughs> um i play the gods i play the mortals and everything else in between uh, to my left we have alex that's me oh hi hey. I'm, I look at that i'm on the left um <laughs> hi i'm alex uh i play sir dennis quail uh a very eclectic kenku uh which i do not wish to explain and uh, my pronouns are he, him, and uh, I was introduced because of, uh, hold on, uh, that person, and um, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you just pointed into the void of nothing, but that's fine. <laughs> no, it's, uh, I'm looking at the thing. It's, or, I don't know. It's great. <laughs> um, 
right. So right above Alex, we have. Uh, oh, me. Yes. Lady Bunch. Hi, I'm Lark. My pronouns are she, her, and I playing Malin the wizard with the big hat. <laughs> Those are the big details that we have. <laughs> um, going up from there, we have Ange. I'm Ange. I play Evie, the. We're going to say pirate for. The, as that's the easiest explanation of uh, pronouns, she, her. Um, I don't even know what else to say, so shrug. It's Monday, guys. We're doing this on a Monday. That was a bad choice. Either way. <laughs> Uh, all the way in the top right. It's my Wednesday. Um, hi, I'm Leo. Uh, I play Garamagal, uh, the half orc barbarian rogue. And I also have a brown bear named Bear. Like, I should have said Bear is who I played. I that's also who I play. <laughs> have two armadillos. I have two um, white dragon armadillos. Correct. Uh, Snowy boys. Yeah, there's a lot to catch you up on. Unfortunately. <laughs> That's right. We started Jumanji. <laughs> Natalia. Hi, I'm Natalie. Uh, she, her. I play Corinne, the anime character. Um, <laughs> she has a robotic silver fox companion named Arvin, uh, who I also voice sometimes. Sometimes I give it to Vinny. We share. Um, and yeah, you can find me online, uh, as Natalie Fuinha, where I do cosplay and art. And also I have a podcast of my own, the Storyteller Squad. You can check us out. My friends and I play Monster of the Week. Hell yeah. Um, we are going to be doing a quick session zero. And I mean, quick listen, most of the stuff we went over in our first, um, fire arc session, uh, it is a little more refined since then. But we'll probably go by a lot of it real quick because um, we played together for almost a year. We worked very well off of each other and most boundaries and limits we kind of already know and worked very well with dealing with those. Um, uh, the main thing is we do have a new player. We do have uh, our new wonderful Malin, I believe the name is for your character. Yes, that's um, my so, character name. Yeah, um, I will mostly go by character names because that's I okay. can read those off of Discord right there and it makes it so much easier for me um right now um but yeah um so the new player we're gonna might have to slow down at some spots um at the end of our little session zero we're going to try to explain fire arc to you guys i'm so sorry in advance um as we try to sum up the events of things that ha it's very much going to be olaf in the middle of frozen 2 where he's doing a really bad job of explaining frozen 1 um but it's i'm sure it'll be very interesting um, and then we will also be explaining details about our, the characters, so that way you know them a little better before we jump into the action. We will be building a wizard, because, um, a quick spoiler, the group got really rich, um, and by getting really rich, they bought themselves, like, basically an infinite, infinite teleportation wizard to just travel along with them, um, who is a buff wizard, and that's about as much detail as we want. It's a drow buff wizard, and that's literally all the details we have so far. Oh so we... We'll probably build the priorities we got them. we got them in spades um and then from there um we will probably do enough role playing to at least make it so that way malin is joining the group so we might actually enter the world a little bit for the session zero maybe maybe not at the very least we'll talk out the details that at least sets up session one or at the very least gets malin to be a part of the group maybe it's another wizard that y'all hired who knows we don't know um but for first and foremost welcome thank you for coming along and hanging out with us um and i hope session zeros don't bore you because they are important um and hopefully any person that you work with any person that is trying to lead you through a story understands that session zeros are important not everyone covers the same topics and honestly i probably am missing things that i should be covering but most players that i know at this point and um we know enough about each other that this is all we really need uh, but any of my players specifically please any of you if there are things that aren't in here that you want to talk about let me know and interrupt me and we can go through it um does anyone as it says in the first part 
have questions before we start going through this for you, the U5. Yes, very important. What's your favorite food? You know right now. <laughs> Water. No, steak. Great. Oh no, you turned that switch in my brain on, Alex. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, oh, first question. Vinny, where are you from? <laughs> uh, this is gonna be a long three hours. I hear a question. What gives you the right? Uh, Jesus Christ? I don't know. <laughs> Our Lord and Savior, Bahamut the Dragon. So what we is- actually praise I Tima around here. Uh, I suppose with this that point, was a good my answer. I suppose at this point, my question is why? Just why? Um, ain't nothing but a heartache. I will tell you why. <laughs> ain't nothing but a mistake. And that's about as much as I can probably say on stream before they <laughs> charge me. Um, God. A lot of times. I'm fighting the urge to finish. I'm saving my questions <clears throat> for the end of the the, the, the end. All right. Because I know there'll be a lot. Yeah, there, you're going to be a, more than you guys who are watching this. I feel so bad for our newest party member who has to interact with all of these new details that have never existed before so today. Sorry. <laughs> I Either. will roll with the punches as best I can. I appreciate it. Um, so, first and foremost, uh, I asked if they had questions. You saw the answers I got. The rest of this is their own fault. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I'm sure it wasn't actually important that we sure. answer or ask questions in an Not mature adult way. <laughs> Not at all. Um, <laughs> second thing, uh, group notes. You guys all got sent the doc. There is a group note attachment in there. So, in the sweet goss, there is also a uh reheated note section if you want to use it we have the roll 21 as well and we have the whole discord where you can make a mess of notes <laughs> which notes we where... already have yeah make notes wherever you want it doesn't matter i just want you to keep some of them because at some point you guys might want to remember what the actual plot is we know it takes <laughs> about halfway through but who knows <laughs> hey, hey, you know how chaotic those notes are you're gonna open those notes one day <laughs> I'm going to regret it, I know. Yeah. <laughs> um, so first, um, two topics uh, that I uh, usually try to toss out. Um, and uh, I mean, uh, we don't like to yuck people's yums around here, but there are certain topics that we try not to hit at all. And we already have some of those on the list. Um, some are just potential negative topics. These are actually from the last, um, the last session that I played. Uh, or last game I played, this is uh, based from light arc stuff. Um, so quickly, just uh, from the five of you, are there any specific negative topics that you don't mind treading near but want to not get too close to? And is there any topics you just want to avoid, not go near at all, or ever deal with? Um, there are two that are already in the topics to avoid, which I think covers most of our issues. Racism and rape. We're just going to never need to deal with either of those. <laughs> Yeah, um, that's fair to me. If, if you don't mind, um, the young child abuse is, uh, now that I have a little one, is very bothering. Yeah, I would agree. Any sort of like child exploitation or abuse is not on the table mm -hmm. for me. Don't hurt kids. Yeah. I, I'm seconding all of that. <clears throat> gotcha. Cool. We'll add that to the list of do not. Um... Cool. That is something that we did not have before, and I don't think we even actually ever discussed that really during the fire arc, and I don't think it ever needed to come up either, but it's <laughs> nice to know that now, and to have that out now. Um, cool. Alright. Um, I'll throw out a couple more, just because they've come up a lot in other games, and I kind of agree that, like, eh, we don't need these in-game. Um, graphic depictions of suicide. Not great. Yeah. Uh, jokes yeah. about COVID and the pandemic. Yeah. Um, all the other phobias and isms that we don't like. Um, yeah, this is. Um, I will say this is the good time to lay down any isms or phobia. Not not isms. Any phobias you specifically have? Because mm. uh, we did. I did have a player that had arachnophobia that I never knew about before, uh, which was very good to find out. Because then I got to just say, okay, we're never dealing with spiders. Mm -hmm. Um, so if there's any mild like phobias and stuff that 
like as an enemy like might be dealing with with enemies or foes please tell me now so they don't make them appear like if you don't like bunnies i'd rather not make rabbits appear besides bunny people that some people date i'm afraid of kanku that that is <laughs> so unfortunate for you my good um, sir honest honest on my serious note not necessarily a phobia but one thing that does make me squeamish yeah. is if we're describing stuff like any kind of torture that involves the eyes, I will get very, very squeamish and visibly, yeah. visibly uncomfortable. Oh. Um, I okay. usually, when when it comes to torture stuff, similar to when you guys dealt with a tortured prisoner, I will tell you like a little bit of the aftermath. I usually try not to give you details while it's going on, because no one really, no yeah. one needs that. I could do without the torture, yeah. like the yeah, like the vague descriptions of gore, vague, and that yeah. you vague descriptions, good. It, it, and it only ever came it's it only ever came up once and it was one of my closest friends and he was going through a scene basically like out of a horror movie which was fine and then when i react he's like what i'm like it's the eyes it's a thing and he's like oh shit i'm so sorry yeah all right uh, but, any it was, but that's that's fine any final ones from anybody last for... one on mine is uh pregnancy stuff because i'm not gonna have kids and i feel like i don't want to speak on that mm. so yeah i could agree to yep. that cool. that's I, yeah man, that's shrug that's, that's it fine. for me cool and i think covers all my stuff cool anything going once Twice. And this is a list we can update whenever. So if there's ever a time where you just want to even private message me, guys, just message me. I'll add it to the list and I will do my best to avoid. Uh now a bunch of random stuffs. Uh this is just lists of things. Some of this doesn't even apply. I just haven't got to remove some of it. So first thing, uh level up is milestone based. You guys knew that. That's how you guys leveled up. It was just whenever I felt like it. Um, there is a very good chance you guys don't level up considering we're playing once a month, but who knows? I might let it whenever you guys really do something big and cool. Um, I mean, we didn't level up when we saved the world, so yeah, yeah, no, you like, became are we owed one billionaires? <laughs> you know yeah, what? Yeah, sure. I, I, listen, yeah, I, don't I, I, I don't care about it. I don't give a shit. No, it's not. No, it's not. Yeah. For a billion gold. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like I'll, I'll keep making these deals if you Natalie. want. Natalie. <laughs> um, PC secret secrets. Um, because we are streaming, try to message them to me uh, on Messenger or Discord if you want to keep something private or secretive. That is not something that we can always do. Sometimes you might just have to be like, hey. None of you guys know this, but I need to let you guys know, and we'll, we can verbally talk about it on stream. But if you want to, for whatever reason, keep it super duper secrety secret, message me. Um, unfortunately, while we have Discord open and we're doing video chat, I won't get a message about a Discord message. Meaning the only way I will get a message is Messenger or text messages. So I'm not going to get those updates, unfortunately, uh, if you do it on Messenger or on Discord. Yeah. Uh, just an FYI. Um, player expectations. Um, what are you guys looking for? Story? You guys looking for loot? Loot, I'm sure, is a serious option that you guys all really need to worry about getting those rare magical items now. Um, uh, this is a normal discussion for normal campaign stuff. When we're, Since we're only doing once a month, it's harder to have this. Um, I will say you guys can give me any expectations you have, but I will say that the assumed expectation with us playing once a month, you're going to get a little side story that hopefully we don't need to finish next time, but if we do, we will. A uh, small side story of your adventuring around and saving the world. That That is most likely what it's going to be. Uh, if there are other things you specifically want, if you guys want to lean heavily towards the story and like character interaction, um, if you guys want to lean heavily more towards the battles and fighting, let me know. I'm 100% like here for roleplay and lore and plot. Uh -huh. Same. I think we hit a pretty good balance in the like actual fire arc between cool epic combat and like a lot of story so it's cool uh -huh. epic combat is a lot of fun mm -hmm. yeah. but the but it had a point to the story combat for the sake of combat is just, just we will me agree so you guys will be heading to locations where like there are things to fight the reason you're there is to solve the problems 
Uh, and more often than not, it's going to be, there's a thing for there for you to kill. But there will probably either be puzzles or issues or people or plot along the way. Uh, expect combat. <laughs> Uh, oh. Each session will probably, unfortunately, uh, not unfortunately, most likely have combat. Totally fine with combat. Malin can turn a dude inside out if she has to. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Uh, rules debating. Uh, I feel like I know the rules, unfortunately, really well at this point for 5e. Uh, just because my head has had to become mush for this stuff. Um, I will still forget things. Uh, whoever can look it up on their phone and find a more credible source faster is normally who's going to be right in the end as far as I'm concerned. But if we're in a moment or we're crunched for time, I'm just going to make a call that maybe none of us is going to like. And then we're just going to move on, look it up, and change it for the future. <laughs> <laughs> but normally I can look it up on the phone while the argument's going on and then just give you a, a, fi a final result. But who knows? Not me. Uh, I'm have a discord message that i need to check um all right player absences we are going to be working around everybody's schedule to make this work meaning <laughs> if last minute someone cancels i will try to be very understanding i will also probably give you one smack on the bum <laughs> a singular <I'm> smack <laughs> <laughs> Look, I I will just be I will just be very annoyed. That's all. Um, I'm we're working with everybody's <laughs> schedule, so like absences shouldn't be a thing. It's also once a month, so I'm assuming we'll make it work. Um, please just let me know in advance if there's definitely times and places you guys can't make. Simple and easy there. That's fair. Uh, ethics and moral pushing. Um, I'm not gonna do any more than we already did in Fire Arc, which is to say, like I made people who were bad, and you guys argued with them. I think that's like the farthest that really went <laughs> i think gromagol honestly did more ethic and moral pushing than anybody else purely from the thank very... you thank the... you look from a, from like a black and white standpoint you were orange and red so it was very <laughs> just saying i know what i was here for it was great it was great i mean because... more often than not we got mad and argued with characters who were not bad mm-hmm so <laughs> no, it, was, it really was just Corinne picking fights all the time and yeah. and Dennis destroying whatever he could that's not true I built things like relationships yeah and... no you destroyed furniture <laughs> to create art and I can appreciate that yeah that's not destroying that's creating he went very Banksy Mm -hmm. Yes, can be done. Mm -hmm. I, I will agree with that. Um, arc length, twenty to thirty sessions. I had that written. That's obviously not accurate anymore. We'll just ignore that. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, you heard it here, folks. Twenty to thirty sessions. Um, tracking material components. At this point in time, <laughs> I unfortunately can't make material components be restricted to any single way, shape, or form. Y'all are fine. Uh, unless there's something super ridiculous, like you need like the toenail of a, an arch lich, I, I can't even kind of like be like, you guys have the gold you need for Riven Fies at this point. It's just unfortunate <laughs> that there's just no way that that's ever going to get limited again. <laughs> it just means it's not a problem in the story anymore. No, it just oh. means I have to bring in the deck of many things and hope you guys draw bad. Do it. You just have to give oh, us challenges I mean... that aren't related to lack of resources. <laughs> Also, Reviva, like we, I mean, this is kind of a non sequitur, but in the game I used to play, uh, my DM had a thing where if you got revivified, like on the battlefield, like not like a proper revive, um, you had to roll in a chart and something would happen. You'd come back, but something would happen. Yeah. Um, and there are fates worse than death, my friends. There are definitely fates worse than death. You could have Indeed. a dwarven vacuum salesman stuck in your brain the whole time no. uh, you could be revived no. or you could be revived as a troglodyte which happened in one of the parties i was in a long time ago yep i'd like you like you guys to know that mel wrote in the comments uh how much did y'all break this man uh <laughs> <laughs> 14 Me, not at all. trillion fine. gold worth mel <laughs> that's how it's, much <laughs> it's fine I didn't do um, anything, actually. I'm yeah, guilty. No, there's, you're, there's, you're the my, <laughs> there's my answer. 
<laughs> Simultaneously too much and not enough. That's fair. Uh, we're going to move on to s story and safety tools. Um, before we get straight into that, I guess there's a simple hand signal thing we'll set up that most of the other groups know. Um, we didn't really need to use them because we just interrupted each other. Um, <laughs> uh, single hand raise means you want to get knocked in real soon for whatever is being talked about, as in like you have something to say or probably related or needs to be brought up soon. Double hand raise means it needs to be brought up right now because it's related to that exact subject going on. T for timeout, meaning either it is too graphic, phobic, or uh, we just need to pause to like really recollect a situation. Three very simple hand signals that use them when you can. Raising hands is the easiest. I'm sure we'll use that a lot. Um, or forget and just interrupt. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> I Let me have hope. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Uh, um, what's up? No, I was just going to... I don't know. I got nothing. You're fine. I'm gonna <laughs> trying to stay quickly on point to get through these stuff real quick. Um, for safety tools, um, I will just read the ones that we potentially can use, and people here, depending on what we want to do, we can use in the end. There is the X card, which literally means you have an X on a card. Hold it up. Um, there are lines and veils, which is something that we might want to discuss more later. But basically, uh, veils are thing. I believe it's veils are things that you're okay with soft limits and then lines are hard limits for things we kind of talked about that a little bit already but if we ever need to get more particular about it let me know and we will um there are the consent flower or basically uh the street lights which is green yellow red um fairly self-explanatory green means go yellow means you're okay to push limits a little more if you're willing to test it red means we need a hard stop on whatever's going on um script change <clears throat> uh, allows for the ability to sort of manipulate time, as it were, but specifically uh, manipulate the way the plot is going a little bit if it's getting uncomfy. Rewinding, pausing, or fast-forwarding to skip over, or rewinding to change something because it led to a specific thing that none of us feel like dealing with, uh, either plot-wise or ethically or whatever reason we decide we don't want to deal with it. <clears throat> uh, this one is a thing I made up. And we may not even need to use this because of the way where we are. Um, avenues. Uh, there, there's an A, B, C, and D for avenues. A is a main plot. So basically, if you're staying along the storyline, um, if you guys want to know what plot or avenue you're currently going on, you can ask, and I will tell you that you're on A, B, C, or D. A is main plot. B would be a side character plot. So like if Corinne or Dennis or Malin or somebody is having like a storyline plot and we aren't sure that it, this is relating to it if you ask like i mean like it's b it's definitely a, ca a character plot that we're hitting on it just doesn't seem like it yet you just got to give it more time uh c means it is like adjacent to the plot stuff but potentially just not and d means like it's just so off course from what you guys should be doing <laughs> um this is basically if you decide that, that you really want to check the the map in the middle of your questing and being like we went really far off the trail um it should be very obvious in these one shots slash these once a month things where you're supposed to be going on the off chance that it's not ask me about the avenues and we can uh explain it a little better d in the chat folks we're gonna be there a lot <laughs> <laughs> yep. to, although to be fair that was one of Evie's goals, was to get a, an a gosh darn accurate map. Yeah, literally. And she was collecting, and she was collecting them. I will say, as I'm getting reading the the next thing, um, and did you ever play a game called Skies of Arcadia? No. Uh, it's for the GameCube. I actually recommend it for any of you guys. It's literally about being sky pirates. Uh, it is literally per the perfect game to play if you want, like a good end to what this is probably going to feel like. <laughs> oh, yay. Um, so either A, is it, is it, I'll have to look and see if it is available for the Switch. Definitely not. This is or, a game. Yeah, or more sure accurately, the shop to play. Definitely not. But you could try. I'm sure you could find, I'm sure with the system I know that you have at home, you can find a way to play it. Uh, I do not have a GameCube. Sorry, I know. it was for the Dreamcast. Emulator. That's what I'm saying. 
Yeah. Uh, AKA, I'll figure it out. Yep. Yep. All right. But message me that so I have it in writing. Sure. Um, quick uh, set of the homebrew rules. Uh, there's more, but these are the simple ones. Taking a potion is a bonus action. Feeding it to someone else is an action. Very simple. Most people use that at this point. Um, characters gain a point of exhaustion after battle if they fail at least one death save. Oh. Yeah, I decided to add something new. Something to make it spicy. Let's That's have fun, fun with it, guys. Yeah. Um, uh, I try to use passive skill checks. I used to have a list of everybody's skill checks. I don't currently have that in front of me anymore. We're gonna, we'll, hopefully before the next time we play, I get everybody's including Malins. So I will try to use passive skill checks when possible uh, for perception and insight and stuff. But when you guys are actively out on a mission, I will then ask for rolls. But for the most part, if I can passively just weave it into the story, I try to. Wait, passive perception is... And uh, plus your perception. Plus Okay, so it's ten. <laughs> nice, nice. You probably Do you want to put that in the general chat, Vinny, just so you have it. Uh, sure. Samesies. It's, it's fine. Evie's is like sixty-two or something. It's, yeah, I know. It's, it's Evie's is <laughs> twenty. Passive something. perception is twenty-two. Passive everything Thanks. else is on uh, is like just over ten. Yeah. My explanation is that her, she's too busy reading. And like doing magic stuff and just doing like hot girl shit to pay attention to anything else happening uh, around her. I feel, I feel that no, life, girl. No, mm -hmm. it was basically double. It it basically stacked because Rogue and Monk. Yeah, some people have some fun, ridiculous stuff. Um, Can you have points. a passive acrobatic score? Yeah, I, I uh, I'm going to let everyone have pass. Yes. If it, if I have acrobatic. a passive acrobatic, passive intimidation is a twenty-one then. Uh, yeah, passive, that's right. <laughs> passive acrobatics would be twenty-five. I do try to use these when I'm describing stuff. So when some when the two monks are like animating <laughs> off the walls, yeah. or, yep. or people are trying to talk to uh, Gron, uh, there's a reason why they're a little standoffish. It's delightful. Yeah, 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 we did some ridiculous delightful. monk nonsense, didn't we? <laughs> it was good um, times. A yeah, it was great. <laughs> Fate points. This is a new thing I will explain specifically because, uh, Malin, I don't believe you were here for fate points or we had it explained to you at all uh, last time uh, when we had the quick little get together. Um, we do not do inspiration die uh, around here. Well, okay. inspiration for like bards, but uh, not like I give you uh, an inspiration chance. Um, we do what well, were luck points and now we are calling fate points just so there is a different term. Um, they are a set amount of points. Um, I'm going to give you some at some point uh, because you're new and you're allowed to have some. None of them are. They'll earn them when they want them. Um, <laughs> you earn them by rolling a crit fail or crit success. Okay. Um, also, something amusing happens and I just reward them and feel like it because I'm the DM and this is the only real thing I control because at this point everyone's too powerful for me to control anything else. All right. Um, <laughs> Uh, you can trade these fate points in. Um, there's a description that we have, but um, most people, uh, you can trade them in either to increase the point value of your roll, either an attack, ability check, or saving throw. So if you roll a 17 on something, but you need to get to 20, you can give three fate points to bring yourself up to 20 and then pass that save or hit okay. that AC or whatever. That That's makes usually, sense. Um, you, you can use them on yourself at a one-to-one -one trade. You can use them on other people for a, a one to two trade, meaning they are two to one trade where you have to use two to effectively affect one point. Okay. So if you have an AC of 16 and someone rolls an 18 and you're trying to get them down, you're going to have to knock them down three points, meaning you have to trade six points to make it so you don't get hit. It's Fair a little annoying. Um, it's a little annoying. And in some moments it, we get real crunchy with it. Uh, but for the most part, uh just accumulate points and then when a big moment happens where you just really want it to work just chuck all those fate points in because that's normally what they do okay. cool. <laughs> will do um you being new you can have 10 fate points you're welcome to mark that off wherever you want wow uh, I, look you all have points of some <clears throat> whatever nah, look you you all went into a finale and um, you came out big from the finale i didn't I don't use wanna... slot 
<laughs> I don't want to hear about it. We should have had Bear had collect fate points. That would have been fun. Um, I still have twelve luck points uh, or fate points. I don't know what you're talking about. See? I don't know if I have any. I forgot they were there. <laughs> that's fine. That's that's great. That means you fought without a handicap, which is great. <laughs> I would not be surprised if I have more than zero, but shrug. That's fair. I have ten. How crazy is that? It's pretty crazy. So special. So special. Welcome, so welcome to the chaos that is fire. Um, <clears throat> Spellbook oh. reminders. Aye. This is important for wizards and would-be people who want to learn spells. Um... You, there's easy ways to look up what what it is for normal um, transferring of spells. The additional homebrew rules that we have is that um, you can, for other people who may want to learn spells, um, you can roll an Arcana check, which is DC 10 plus the spell level, to see if you can cast the spell, basically using up that scroll in that moment. So any of you could cast a spell if you're willing to make the Arcana check for it. Um, if you want to write down the spell and learn it and sacrifice either spells you already have or key points or other resources, if those are things that people would want to sacrifice, like bardic inspirations or stuff, you can then trade those resources and make an arcana check of DC 10 plus twice the spell level to learn the spell. So if you wanted to learn shield, it's a DC, or if you want to use shield once, it would be a DC 11 check. If you want to learn the shield spell it would be a dc 12 arcana check plus you have to either sacrifice one of your own first level spells or in corinne or evie's uh case sacrifice a key point or in uh dennis's case sacrifice like anything i don't know Wait, <laughs> like, do you have spell casting? would that be permanent yeah. key point or just no. uh for the session or for to, the period key point to permanently learn a new a spell you would have to sacrifice it permanently so you would be you would lose a key point to uh, shield is like the one one-on-one -on -one example but like you know we, we'd figure out and do the math depending on what the level of whatever it is trying to whatever it is you're trying to learn but if for instance you wanted to learn the spell haste ev to like catch up to corinne which i think is a level three spell you could potentially sacrifice three key points or maybe like some of your sneak attack damage or something i, I would figure out a trade um i'm mm. willing to trade to let you learn that spell because i'm mm. pretty sure anyone would learn how to read spell scrolls would in fact learn how to read spell scrolls <laughs> um so that's the thing we can cover and go over at different points this big fuck this this annoying piece of shit stuff right here that had to come into existence thanks to dennis resuscitation the revival of a human <laughs> Look, i'm a doctor okay yeah yeah i both love you for this and i hate you for this because it made me have to come up with a very fun homebrew mechanic but one that you broke so fucking bad <laughs> that you auto succeeded it it was insanity anyways um if you wish to bring a human life back you can if it's uh within i think 10 minutes uh mm -hmm. before they've passed or after they've passed right. um and you have to make 10 rounds of uh, medicine checks the dc starts at 25 and every time they're in it raises up one so basically you have to make five checks in a row from dc 25 to dc 29 to bring someone back uh using just medicinal skills um literally shouldn't be very possible for most people dennis is broken that's we're, we're just gonna leave it at that <laughs> uh dennis did it and like did six checks and auto passed it for, yep. with like i think with like three rolls and then like an inspiration and then a help action it was bullshit it was great <laughs> Sometimes he's gotta cheat death, you know? Yeah. Just just spit uh -huh. right in his face. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. your character is a doctor. Mm -hmm. and... <laughs> Why um, do I feel like at some point you can't tell he's no, gonna man. have like a like a final destination esque arc where it's like death itself is like, I fucking had enough of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I've been thinking about pulling a Kravitz out, but I just don't want to because someone's gonna be like, Wow, he's hot, and then we're gonna have to deal with that, and I don't feel like <laughs> 
probably true. And let's be honest, if death showed up, I would just be like, hey, uh, do you need another follower? And then I'll learn how to be a death mage. Oh, God. I hate it. I love it, but I hate it. <laughs> oh, God, um, why? There's actually more stuff here, because I've made a lot more things since here. Um, if anyone decides they want to use nets, I have changed the way nets work a bit, because they made it so nets suck, but nets are actually very useful. If anyone decides they want to use nets, let me know. There are new statistics for it. It's literally on the sheet. Um, taking 20 is something that uh, I think we started using at the end of fire, which was basically if you take the time, I think 20 times the normal time um, to do something. So like picking a log or something. So instead of taking one round, you take like two minutes to sit and do it. Uh, you can automatically count it as a natural 20 and succeed. So when you have the time to sit and fix things, or do things you can auto succeed on those roles you know if you're looking through a library and you have all the time in the world to like look around you have all the time to just have a nat 20 on a arcana or an investigation check um i would ask you to use them more sparingly than not since we have passive checks and you guys are at a very high level where you guys can succeed on the roles but if there's time where literally it's like okay you guys got two days to do whatever you want i'm going to sit in the library for a day and a half we can use the take 20s but that's really it. Had a heart, commit a heart transplant uh yeah take 20 for that yep yeah take oh, okay. <laughs> God. um cool that is all of the homebrew stuff that's all the rules we got that done in like a half hour that's great um any questions related to any of that so far no Right. How do you feel about the who? Which who's? Yes. The Dr. Seuss who. who's? No, the who. Like the band? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't really listen to them. I, I've never listened to them, as far as I remember. But that's... Uh, I know songs, not bands. So that's... You will make me sad. Considering, I, considering for one of my papers in college as a... As a basis point, I used to the song, I believe it's Baba O'Reilly and T.S. Eliot, and compared it to T.S. Eliot. Proofs. I mean, why are you bringing this up? Is it that our launch of the airship needs to be back by Teenage Wasteland, or...? Um, I somehow understood that. You know what? What is the airspeed, vo what is the airspeed no. velocity? Back <laughs> <laughs> like any European. <laughs> okay. Um, for that instance, we're going to take a quick uh, break for people to get water, go to the bathroom, and prepare. When we come back, we are going to explain the fire arc to you guys and explain these characters. <laughs> that's the rest of this. That's the rest of this session. <laughs> uh, we'll be right back. Uh, it's gonna be. She and Helith have been talking about traveling around so that Lyra can build up her seed selection because she really wants to collect more. <laughs> Mel! <laughs> Mel. <laughs> That's not what we mean! There was a pause, okay? In my defense, there was a pause. Whatever you... Something... My grandfather loves box wine, so maybe this is actually a good thing. What's up, Azenar? Something that is at least older than 15 years. In a box? Do you know, boxes live that long? <laughs> no, absolutely not. I like. I I just enjoy the phrase. Do boxes live that long? <laughs> this conversation. Emphasis on live. This is how I die, folks. Goodbye. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, and, and then everything goes to shit. So Sid, who has been uh, raising. <laughs> Sorry. That was the best thing I've seen all day, sorry. Um. Oh, I just, I heard a thunk that was definitely not part of the routine, turned around, and th uh, someone let the body hit the floor. I, I don't know who. Yeah, you want to use that? I'm going to, I'm going to make it fit. Uh, I'm going to be like. It doesn't matter. You've been gone for six months. You didn't say a word. That's not that long. At this I'm sorry. You up and left your partner for six months without a single 
word. Do you have any idea how often I try to talk to my girlfriend because I can't see her that often? Friend? I'm, I'm, I'm what the hell sorry. is your problem? I'm sorry. Who are you? <laughs> the, at this what time, Bells and Bara appear <laughs> as well. My name's Kim. It is not my pleasure to make your acquaintance. Likewise. Uh, it's water. Ooh. I like, um, I like this. Um, I like your funny words, magic man. <laughs> and I am going to open the stopper, point it directly at this Goliath sitting in front of me, and just say, Geyser. Which, do you need me to read the description of Geyser? No, got it right here. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Brig is about to fuck shit up, and I'm Brig so here for potentially. it. Potentially. If, if instead up. of just knocking them prone, I can knock them off the tower, I w that would be ideal. That would be so good. I'll allow it, because it does so say good. that an object can get knocked over, so. I don't I just, know. Uh, I, I help. I have corpse anxiety. I, I help. <laughs> 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 I want a sh I want a shirt that says "Corpse Anxiety." <laughs> I have, I have corpse, corpse Anxiety. Sara right, and maybe you guys are able to stealth around in the zoo. The animals are helping you. They don't know what you're doing, but they like go in front of you when the <laughs> time is Missy right. <laughs> I, Missy is very noticeable. I would say Missy probably does not help. <laughs> but like, there's a giant elk who's just like. Standing there, takes two steps forward to block your view, <laughs> to block the view for a second, two steps back. Um, <laughs> so yeah, you guys are able to spy as these two go around and, you know, check out, like, uh, <laughs> all the animals. That was no. creepy. <laughs> it's the makeup. Uh, Sid gets a sending message and just hears in their minds. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh fuck, oh fuck, oh fuck, here's, oh fuck. Here's Mama, I haven't failed you yet. Much improved. Where the hell have you been? Miss you? Uh, fuck him up. I will say you don't get that message. <gasps> what? What? You're not playing that character right now. You don't know what's going on. Sid, you have a nice okay. daydream about a message from maybe. Oof. Nitty. Ow. <laughs> Vincent, the fuck? It's like, what are you doing out here? What? I work in this town, darling. I don't understand why you're so confused about why I dead body in this area. D dead body. Uh, and reverbs just I have like... friends. I, I, I don't understand how to explain to you <laughs> that I have a life separate from you. Okay? okay Thanks. Fine. Don't have to do this right now. I... Uh... <laughs> I mean, why not? Why not do it right now? You seem more more than happy to embarrass me in front of any other people. You do it at my work constantly. Uh, you watch Mogan be like, okay, if this is going to be a piss party, can you two take it about 20 feet that way while I talk it to these people? No, I, I'm truly not interested. We have, Everybody is aware of our relationship, and I am not interested in further pursuing it. Uh, Ederick gets, like, red-faced as Mogan just, like, okay, just come. Can I have my ring back? I think it's your turn. Ooh. That's a three. They are they still holding Kind? Yeah. They're gonna just where's your hand? So this one. They're gonna just grab Ooh. the finger and just put it on. And, give it a little tap. <laughs> and then sort of like so awkwardly shuffle awkwardly shuffle away to go talk to Bells. Kin's so just Kin just lets out a dying gasp in your arms. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <so> <laughs> I love it's just it's slowly back. getting darker. It's back <laughs> for season two.
<laughs> that was, I'm not drowning. That was, I am swimming so good. That was kind of <laughs> that was kind of the energy <laughs> that got <laughs> that got tossed out. I don't want to die. die. <laughs> Didn't we? I just talked to you guys. Yes, darling. Catch up. <laughs> not sure what would happen if I did that. I'm also scared to know what would happen if we took the flower. Do it. <laughs> this is not All Ethel right. speaking. Mm -hmm. That's, that's Kareem. This is, this is Kareem the let's chaos just, gremlin let's, speaking. Let's just see what happens. Right. Your chaos is showing, Kareem. I know. It doesn't come out very often. Take the flower. Huh? I'm gonna take the flower. Right. Uh, gonna end up dead. You you Let's have the flower. Out. Uh, you watch as the body begins to decompose at a much quicker rate. Oh put shit! Can I put it back? You can put wait, it... Wait, wait. Uh, so she comes out of the temporary hit points and just kind of collapses in on a cloud of darkness, and out from the cl cl the cloud comes Lyra with her skull mask on and one yellow eye just glowing and she is crackling in spore energy she's still got the veins and everything but she's raving and she's yes. ready to go she's got no scratches nothing fuck it up fuck, fuck it, it up, up. Uh, hey baby girl my puppy is bothering me oh, um, oh, oh sorry I thought you were talking to me <laughs> no we don't do pet names on stream um <laughs> Uh, you, that's not the worst thing that's been done in the last 10 it's, minutes. It's I don't truly it. not. I don't know. I was going to make faces anyway. What do you want from me? It's, it's a fine. very reaction. Uh, this thing has exactly like eight. She is. She is that. She is that shit. <laughs> All right. Are you guys drinking? One of you is the red character. The other is the blue character. Okay. <laughs> not on purpose. <laughs> Darn it. I, I just like it. cherry and they like blue raspberry. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Alright, red character and blue character. Is. It's fine. <laughs> Accurate. Uh. It matches your classes too. I know! Necromancer and paladin, even though you're a barbarian right now, I don't care. That's <laughs> what I'm getting at. Uh. I know the others are at the door. I'm gonna say it quiet enough that they can't hear me say her name. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm just gonna say Irona. I'll be here to help you. We got this mess started. And I'll help you get out of it, too. <laughs> cool. So Kind immediately locks eyes on Yvette and, like, starts swinging a hand back to start casting some shit. Nope. <laughs> nope. Also gets nope, no, 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 no. Bells is going to jump in between. Wizard duel. Anyways. <laughs> No, this is the real one. She this just one's my fiance. They just saved you. They just saved you. I just healed your ass. I'll take it back. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, Bells is flaring in the air in between up. Kent and Yvette. <laughs> okay, she kind of just processes for a second. She just goes, "This ass is reserved. Thank you very much," and just gets up and starts dusting herself off. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> man. Ah, <laughs> man. What's the Lord's Prayer? How does it start? Um, oh, I don't remember. I don't know, but I'll, not, I'll make one up. Our DM who are in heaven. Who are, who are our, in crit roll. Our, our, our oh, DM is, who are in Cali. In crit roll land. Sandria, uh, 19. By wisdom come. By perception be done. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone can write that up for a minute. <laughs> I make up a whole map. On, on, on Earth, as it is in Ex Alexandria. And <laughs> Alexandria. Alexandria. <laughs> Give us this day. Wait, wait, our where are we? Our, What's where we're going? Daily Chris. Chris. <laughs> Daily Chris. <laughs> Anyways, All right, uh, what's what's so a nineteen? Write it down to Tamlin and Lee. A nineteen. Maybe it's still scowling. It slowly fades. Still disapproving, but no more.
Sarah, and maybe you guys are able to stealth around in the zoo. The animals are helping you. They don't know what you're doing, but they like go in front of you when <laughs> the time is right. Help. <laughs> <laughs> I, Missy is very noticeable. I would say Missy probably does not help. <laughs> but like, there's a giant elk who's just like standing there, takes two steps forward to block your view, <laughs> to block the view for a second, two steps back. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you guys are able to spy as these two go around and you know check out like uh <laughs> all the animals that was no. creepy <laughs> it's the makeup she is cheers to that cheers to that shit <laughs> all right are you guys drink <laughs> one of you is the red character the other is the blue character okay <laughs> Not on purpose. Darn it. I, I just like blue. cherry and they like blue raspberry. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> All right. Red character and blue so character. Nice. It's fine. <laughs> um, Accurate. It matches your classes too. I know. Necromancer and paladin, even though you're a barbarian right now, I don't care. That's what I'm getting at. Uh, it doesn't matter. You've been gone for six months and you didn't say a word. That's not that long. At this I'm moment. sorry, you up and left your partner for six months without a single word? Do you have any idea how often I try to talk to my girlfriend because I can't see her that often? Friend? I'm, like, I'm sorry. Your problem? I'm sorry. Who are you? <laughs> the, at this time, Bells and Bara <laughs> appear. <laughs> As well. My name's Kim. It is not my pleasure to make your acquaintance. Likewise. <laughs> Google Meets. Okay. Hello. We are back, y'all. Uh, sorry for that extended break. So long of, like, 30 seconds. Um, four years! That, that, that was a noise. Did you say four years? Yes. Okay. <laughs> My brain did not process it at first. It was just four years! <laughs> uh, now, we're in the part of the journey. Bless you. Thank you. Uh, we're one. Everyone introduces their character and explains it a little bit to you so you know who they are, whom they are. Um, next time there will be artwork and accompanying uh, nameplates so like it's easier to tell, but at the very least you can get a description of what their bit of their backstory and a little bit of the journey they've been on so far. Um, um, Malin, we'll save you for very last and we're going to go to everybody else first, but we will do the same process as last time. Dennis, you're first. What is it? Uh, are you sure? Fine. Corinne, you're first. <laughs> I'm first? Mm -hmm. Oh, God. You're, you're the uh, quickest. Highest initiative. You gotta go first. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, no, that's fair. Um, <laughs> let's see. Corinne, uh, she's kind of tall, I think we said. Uh, let me check her, her bio stats on the sheet. Uh, Corinne is 5'10". She uh is very like athletically built um she has sort of uh grayish but with like a purplish pink tinge to her hair um sort of silvery uh her skin is sort of a warm bronzy color uh with white tattoos that run in geometric patterns all over her um and uh she has like Amber eyes uh, with a little bit of like violet flecked within them and some gold. Uh, and she wears pretty like, uh, I don't know, her outfits I always draw as like a mix of sci-fi and fantasy because uh, that's my jam. Yep. Um, and I wouldn't describe it as like hoish. But she likes a crop top and some short shorts. Respect. <laughs> so, um, what's her name? Oh. Yeah, Florence. It. What's yeah, her name I from mean, fair What's her name from Fairy Tale? Oh God, I haven't read that in forever. Lucy? But yeah, I partly. Think it's, yeah, I think partly exactly. she dresses that way because her tattoos need to be recharged with sunlight, um, and so it's just easier if she can like lose a vest and her little like skirt wrap thing and be pretty much ready to go. Uh, for her morning meditation. She is, uh, she's an Asimar, um, 
that I don't think we have to keep that secret. Um, she is a monk of the Sun Soul and a light cleric. Um, <clears throat> and what else do you want besides physical stuff, Vinny? Uh, you worship Helm. That's a big thing. Yep. Like her Helm is deal. her deity. Uh, <laughs> she comes from a monastery where all of the, um, you know, students and teachers there are chosen by a certain deity and are gifted with these magical tattoos, which then they use to go out in the world and uh, try to help people with. Um, it's a it's an interesting sort of duality going on where you have the Sun Soul monks, which generally are assigned gods of like the good aligned spheres and then the uh shadow monks which more often than not get uh paired with a sort of evil quote-unquote deity um but the monks themselves are taught to like resist the pull of evil and use that as a way to like recognize evil in the world in order to prevent it and uh turn folks away from that path um and yeah, personality-wise, she is just a shonen anime protagonist. Uh, she wants to be the best. She got to go fast. Uh, if you're bad, she will punch you. Um, <laughs> sometimes it's slightly like... annoying. She will punch you. <laughs> <laughs> if you challenge her to a fight, she will punch you. And in all of these cases, sometimes that fist is glowing with a you know bunch of radiant electricity and energy and stuff. Um, as I mentioned in the intro, she's got a new companion. Um, in the original campaign, she had a Tamarin named Widget, who was her little friend, um, who she gifted into foster care with Gromagul, who you'll hear about in a minute. Uh, and her new companion is Arvin, a uh, what Vinny calls a fauna forged, because it's a homebrew item, basically a little robotic animal companion that can take the form of a weapon, armor, uh, and a familiar. Um, and Arvin is super smart. She's way smarter than Corinne. And what a blessing it is to have that <laughs> character <laughs> now on my shoulder at all times. <laughs> yeah, she's very fun. Sometimes we play her sort of like Tony Stark's um, like Friday yeah. uh, voice armor. Sometimes we play it as like just like a very smart sidekick. But it's a very fun little addition for when you appear someplace and it's like you should have knowledge of this. Well, yeah. guess what? Arvin has the knowledge. Arvin has knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, Corinne's impulse control is non-existent, um, but she has a really big heart, and uh, I like playing a chaotic character who is just like wants to do so much good and is very impatient about doing that. <laughs> that's that. That was actually a single sentence sum up of what <laughs> what she is. That's great. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's enough for me. Somebody else talk. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna keep. We're gonna just go counterclockwise now. So I'm gonna bring it up for Grumgul and Bear. All right, and Bear, and Armadillos, and now Widget. <laughs> and now Widget. <laughs> yep, I play Grumgul, who is a half orc barbarian rogue, um, specifically a barbarian of the Bear Totem. Uh, I traded all of my money, uh, like pregame money and uh, magical items to have this brown bear who is souped up and the best of boys and yeah he has one goal in his entire life and that is to preserve all of the nature that exists right now um, and to crush anything that gets in it in his way um, of that and recently in the previous campaign Acquired a warlock patron, um, a dragon who does not get along with uh, my friend Corinne. Uh, but he helped us save a bunch of animals from a fiery explosion for that. I am grateful and will continue to help him and uh, his peoples. Uh, Bear is just as much of a um, eco enthusiast. I don't think that's the word. I, <laughs> that is not the word that's used. The word we use. That's the word I'm using right now. I don't okay. think that so, word means what you think it means. I, it, <laughs> it, 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 it's fine. It's we fine. can rest on it later. It's fine. It's fine. Bear is as much of an enthusiast as Gromagul and. Um, 
possibly more so. He carries all of the money. And um, this is a good segue into what? who's up next? Is it Evie or Dennis? Evie. It's Evie. Okay, never mind. It's not a good segue. <laughs> it's a bad segue. It's Evie. It's a bad segue. He is, uh, he's a singer in a band. To be fair, uh, I think almost everyone joined that. That's everyone's in the band, right? Except <laughs> Evie, that's Except the boy. Evie, which is the great part. He's <laughs> our manager. Yeah, <laughs> that works. like from Metalocalypse. Yes. Uh, Evie is Evie is a Eladrin elf. Uh, so, but unlike most Eladrin does not keep up with the appearance. She could care less. Um, the standard elven features, the skin, the, I think, some level of Legolas from Lord of the Rings, except except not nearly as clean and pretty. Um, almost equal parts monk and, uh, monk and rogue. Um... Uh, for the monk portion, spent time in the temple of the four elements. So while, so while Kirin has a god, Evie kind of not so much, and kind of took the more, the more uh, spiritual aspects of it, and <clears throat> doesn't necessarily have a patron god or anything other than like the elements themselves. And uh, Evie also spent a lot of time on a pirate ship and. And, uh, I'm not sure what else, really, what else, uh, no, Evie's big thing, after spending time at the temple, her big thing is everybody gets a chance at redemption, so if, if, if there is a fight and we can resolve it with nobody dying, she does not want to see people die. And she's tall as heck. Yep. Standard elf. <laughs> Well, we also you also got an enhancement. You got like height, enlarged. Oh, and then that's you also right. got, but then you got a reduction in height, and then you got another enhancement in height. It yeah, was... she can tall. Basically, <laughs> Evie, I forgot about that because that was the that was a thing where I picked a keyword and it didn't match at all. But but uh, Evie is larger than a normal elf, but it doesn't matter because. It doesn't matter because it doesn't really affect too too much, anyways. It does not uh, affect her ability to backflip off of literally anything, including <laughs> the rigging of said pirate ship. Yeah, uh, which you do with relative ease at this point, anyways. Um, Damn it! Yeah, um, yeah. Evie is our. Uh, we had two monks from very different temples, which was very fun. Uh, seeing how their different ideals interacted sometimes. Uh, from Evie, we're going to go back down to the uh, most normal of them all, Dennis. Yep. Our, our casual kanku in a suit. Yeah, yeah. Um, Dennis is um, but Dennis is just a regular everyday kanku. Um, uh, I mean, he's he's done nothing impressive entirely in his life. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> Um, I'm calling uh, shenanigans right it? there. Should I? Should I is this, is this okay. Um, so Dennis is um, complicated. Uh, he is a doctor. Um, he was a, uh, for a period of time of his life, a trapeze artist. Uh, he learned how to be a wizard. Um, he got bard lessons from some spooky angelic monster. Um, he's patrons with a like an elder elemental princess and a big firebird um he's complicated uh he was at one point recently knighted became a sir uh, big paladin order uh, and his most recent achievement was um uh in actually while arvin was being created uh, took the first steps to become a uh, artificer and then Attempted to create his own Arvin, which was a monstrosity uh, that was just a, a weird umbrella to a telescope monster. Um, that was his seventh class out of 14. Uh, 
forgot the ghost barber. Oh yeah, that's right. He became a ghost barber. You, which you was gained a, a lot of weird skills in a very short amount um, of time. His ghost barbership was probably the most key skill he has learned through the entire campaign. Um, <laughs> It yep. really was. It was. It was important. Um, I mean, past that, he's just a normal, regular, everyday Kenku. Um, he intentionally blew us up. Outside of that. When yep. we already fixed, like, had the solution. Yep, that's true. Um, uh, on his off times, uh, he likes hanging out with his uh, uh, figurines of wondrous power, which are the golden lions. Uh, he had During the campaign, he had one for every day of the week. Um, only one of them was a set. That was the weekend, naturally. Now he has a bucket of them because Vinny's a monster. Um, uh, none of them match, and he's very upset about this. Uh, it's his own fault. He yeah, chose no. it. His um, outfit doesn't match. Why? Why would he care? That's right. Um, his, wow. his, mount, his outfit is considered eclectic, and I'm pretty sure Natalie has sent me at least one death threat over it. Um... <laughs> And, uh, yeah, that's that's it. Just little things. Oh, uh, on his off time, whenever we've gone to uh, a hotel, um, we've cre- he has created... You called them installations, Vinny. That's the best way to put them. Installations is, is what they Hello. are. Hello. It's, it's art. I'm proud of it. Thanks. Dennis, Dennis. Dennis has a complete disregard for hotel staff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, at all. Yeah. Um... um. <laughs> He's, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, tossing a, a link up into the chat, um, just uh, on it. That is our Discord. So if you ever did want to chat with us, hang out with us, and stuff, um, and meet up with other community members, that is a good place to do it. Uh, that is just a quick spotlight of that before we move on to our newest member of the crew, Malin. Hello. Malin, share whatever you wish to share about yourself. Uh, Malin is a human wizard. Uh, she stands probably about like 5'10", uh, but is about like, I don't want to say like 6'7", with this, this giant hat. Um, <laughs> she, her outfit is very Elden Ring from Softy, um, because that is my brain rot currently. Um, she's got like just like some robes, dress kind of thing. Her hair is uh dark or like a mousy brown with um like the the very e girl like blonde in the front, and then like there's like some blonde streaks that go through like her two little braids that she has. I say too little, they're very long. Um, and yeah, she is spent most of her life studying magic with her dad. And now that he's off doing retirement stuff, she's off trying to make the biggest ever library of non-magical knowledge that there ever was. A solid goal. Um, We have yet to figure out how Malin meets up with the the rest of the group as a new arrival. But considering, we again, we are already having you pay for another wizard, you probably could have just paid for a bunch of wizards. Um, and Malin just happened to be one y'all enjoyed very much. We, so we had discussed a potential way to meet them. I don't remember it. I've had a very long week. They, she was selling lemonade for spell scrolls, and we said, "Oh,", no. oh and adopted them. And basically, we're like, "You want spell scrolls? Yeah, whatever you want." And bought them the every more, spell scroll in the book. <laughs> the more li- likely reason, like the way you guys met Malin, was she was like running from the cops. <laughs> she was. <laughs> feeling some shit like, like she had asked she had asked nicely and they said no and she said okay and so you're <laughs> probably a hide behind this giant brown bear Perfect. and then just or the monks gra- or through. the monks grabbed her and ran <laughs> running in that. A, with a very small half orc yep and so it's like just that. stayed behind and would started talking to the cops and you know beat them up or you know, just beat up the car. Okay. Or just, or just bottom some bottom stuff. I don't know. We have a lot of money. Malin running from the cops gets kidnapped. Now the cops are like, "Is this a kidnapping and also a theft?" I'm confused. <laughs> now we are being assaulted. What's happening if, here? If there's a crime on a crime, is it just normal activity or is it? Do we let it crime? happen? But the TV and Corinne would see it as save. See it not as kidnapping, but say saving Malin from the cops. 
Well, we would do it the same way that Team Avatar would do it. If Bear <laughs> likes you, you're in. Yep. See, Evie okay. might think it was saving Malin from the cops. Corinne would pay the cops for whatever Malin took and then give you a stern talking to, but then be like, all right, now let's go on an adventure. <laughs> <laughs> and Malin, like, in one ear, out the other, like, yeah, sure, 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 totally, 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 totally. <laughs> <laughs> don't steal. Um, we have money. <laughs> you don't need to steal. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Corinne, just like, don't listen to her. And Evie, and Evie would. Yeah. yeah. Evie would. Ay, 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 ay. Evie would just roll her eyes that they do not steal because it, that's kind of part of her upbringing, or part of her background, even if it's not necessary. Come mm-hmm. on, guys. This is my whole thing. <laughs> uh, all right. I don't so, care. All okay. characters are relatively established at this point. Um, Malin, you get to sit back and relax, because uh, now it's the job of these four oh, to no. tell me the story of Fire Arc. Oh, Think we'll remember the plot this time. <laughs> it no. all started. No, you won't. It's gonna um, be real bad. You know. With a concert. Um, yep. It started concert. for the protest. You were at Kaylin's Cove. <laughs> Opening. Uh, Scene <laughs> begins. Kaylin's Cove. I kind of hate those of you who started the music comments because now it, my brain went that's great it start, starts with an earthquake <laughs> nice yep so uh, yeah it, yes it, it, I was protesting with Bear outside of this what was that a ritzy casino yep <laughs> yep my ship where it was snowing in a place in a time where it wasn't supposed to be snowing so you know yeah it was midsummer in the tropics and there was snow outside yeah it was a little there's a problem <laughs> and uh my pirate ships my pirate ships crew was there on a br- on a much needed uh break from work and most of them were off basically spending all of their hard earned pay at the casino yep um... but but eb kind of was just like Chillin'. No, so, ch- yeah, just kind of chilling, making sure nobody got into any trouble. But I... of course, mm-hmm. but of course, trouble found us. Um, I believe Dennis and Corinne were part of the Poison Mist- Minstrels band playing at this casino um, during that, you know, fortuitous with, night. With Bear, Bear was, I believe, the lead singer. Bear oh, became right. the lead singer. Or was well, yes. You ran into Bear. Yep. Oh, who's an old friend of Dennis's? Yeah, because we were asked to step inside because we were scaring the people outside. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, either you saw Bear or Bear saw you and ran over to each other. And I was like, uh, you know, take a break. It's fun. And he looked you at looked me. me. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then, m- middle of the night, during all these activities, some people got under attack, assassinated by members of the Undertow, uh, a group that you guys ended up running into like four different times. <laughs> and that was the first instance of how many, fl- uh, how hot, how much speed can a monk cover in one round? Yeah, with. Uh, both of you guys trying to push those limits to the max, which which you definitely did. Mm-hmm. Um, we had a flying warlock at that point, which did get uh, uh, was a player that was then at that ooh kitty um, was dropped. Yeah. Look at that chubby little fun one. Wow. I love cats. Um, <laughs> yeah, you guys uh, helped solve that. Solve you helped stop a murder slash theft. So good on you guys for that. Preemptively yeah. solved a murder. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't do anything. I threw I was, a drink one. You, you did not. Two of you. I'm pretty sure both of you two. Gravel Goal, I think, got up to the roof last. But oh. Dennis, Dennis did nothing. <laughs> I threw a javelin into somebody's face. I think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which is, I think, why Dennis was so confused the whole time because I never remember that at all. I wasn't involved. I was just playing music. It was great. Yeah. True. Um, there was a big news broadcast. There was. There was a new news broadcast on some crystals telling you guys that 
um, the Kingdom of Tinaril was offering a big reward for anyone who could go to Sage Cinder and find uh, the prophet from there. Um, uh, no one as the prophet. I've already forgotten him. Prophet Not named Laz. Luz. Nope, it was fine. That you guys ended up calling Laz. It's definitely that Laz. That and was it's a mistake. Fault. Session Look, one. <laughs> like, so, so I tired. My backstory, my teacher for wizard was named Laz, who was a prophet. And then this person <laughs> decides to put in the main foil, who's called Luz, who's a prophet. Naturally, Dennis just confuses it and goes, I know that person, let's go get him. That's my old friend Laz, who I haven't seen in forever. To be fair, that... That NPC existed before your character did. Not, <laughs> not at all. I don't believe it. Not in Dennis's mind. Nope. Yeah, maybe not, yeah, probably not in Dennis's mind. And, um, and therefore, these... not in any of ours. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> and this just, this just adds to the chaos. Uh-huh. Uh, but then you all got onto Evie's captain's ship at that time and sailed away with a couple excursions here and there in between uh, and eventually got to. Um, the wonderful little um, amusement area known as Morphe's Magical Mile. A.K.A. Disney World. Shh, we can't say that here. Well, technically, we had an adventure on the ocean before that. You did. You guys did do some things, and you're welcome to talk about that if you'd like. Well, we met a cool fish. Uh, we walked into the owner's house. <laughs> <laughs> nearly killed his dad that's later that's later that's no we yeah. we met a cool fish on the ocean and then went to like a weird like fish is was... the reason i got big yeah it was a bunch of pillars <laughs> in the ocean yeah, and, like, that's how the... and then we found some ghosts of giants uh yep. in this like cool giant ritual where uh corinne nearly achieved the challenge but because <gasps> she's corinne and eventually ran out Impatient. of ways to dodge damage, was like, I guess maybe I'm supposed to fight? Punch? Nope. Fail. <laughs> yeah. uh, and so instead, Grom walked in and did the same challenge and just tanked all the damage, and that was it. apparently the right thing to do. <laughs> and I got a really cool hammer. Mm -hmm. Evie does not remember any of this. We did all get cool powers, though. Uh, yes. Corinne got really good uh, hearing. Widget, actually, I think, just became a monk. <laughs> actually, I think this might have been, this might have been a, a session thing. that you didn't make. Yeah, because the only thing I got uh, was I got big. Yeah. You got yeah. There were a variety. They went to something called the Amun Root, was basically the meeting of the six giant clans. Which, uh, for those of you who know D and D lore, there is hill giant, stone giant, uh, cloud, um, storm. Uh, frost and fire i believe and uh here they had a few challenges that they all solved which was great uh end results ended up with bear getting enlarged then bear and widget both gaining climbing and swimming speeds which was very funny uh and then everyone else got either a power or something and i think yeah evie was the only one who didn't get something because you weren't there so you ended up also just getting size increase oh no you got um one of you got advantage with smell checks, and one of you got advantage with sight checks, with no. uh, hearing, hearing checks. I got the hearing check advantage. And I that never came up for me. I got a stealth check with, in rocky terrain. Right, yeah. yeah. Everyone got weird particulars that we made up. Um, and I just got, I ended up literally just getting the size boost. <laughs> which then got reduced later on, which was also very funny. Because um, <laughs> I, uh, I literally, because it basically came down to afterwards a sidebar with what is the likelihood you would have chosen the fire keyword? And it's like 90 to 95% unless I was given a reason not to. Uh. Yeah. Oh, we ran into a turtle. Who oh, sold oh. honey? Who you sold did. honey out of his bee comb shell? Mm -hmm. You remember that? So and ghosts. Yep. Uh, that's, ghost ship. Ship. that's right. Uh, that's yeah. how you became a ghost barber, and I learned yep. how to make sushi. Yep. And I learned. And I learned. Oh, that, sushi. And I learned that the map, the map that I was given, was not the same. It was the maps that I had did not were supposed to match and didn't because one of them was so much older than the other. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
Y'all learned some stuff on the ghost ship, uh, getting new skills, meeting new people. Grom got a new hammer beforehand and started learning about using its powers. Um, you did meet, um, I forget the name of the turtle, but a turtle that has reappeared a couple times on the ocean who literally just has a ship made of honeycomb and also has a shell made of honeycomb and just rolls around on that and sells the honey and the honeycomb to people uh where you basically worked as potions where you guys all grabbed some uh enjoyed it you guys had some pleasant conversations with him and then you arrived at morphe's magical Mind. <laughs> <laughs> and then it all kind of went to shit totally <laughs> totally stayed on track Mm-hmm. We, I'm pretty sure we did an and entire tapes. session of us just being at the amusement park. Which was, you know, the point of it. it we, yeah. I wanted basically a session of you guys just futzing around. and we. we it, was like, it was like four <laughs> sessions of futzing around. That's fair. We love futzing. I, it was, was it graphic? How many sessions was that supposed to be out of curiosity? Tungsten. Yeah, you guys met Tungsten. Who you that guy. Oh, Tungsten. You, oh, yeah. you that guy's sure. no good. <laughs> <laughs> you guys were never sure if you liked him at all. He was always unspecified. Uh, oh, <laughs> Barker. Tungsten. Tungsten's bad news. Yeah, we we got a dog, right? Okay, listeners, we yes. bought a cool ass white wolf. It was giant. It was amazing. It was friendly. It followed us around, and then it walked away. And I got real worried. And I went to go look for my fucking dog. And it turns out Vinny lied to me. And he was just some asshole druid. So I punched him. And then I punched his boss. And I think I maybe punched everyone he worked with. You punched I threatened them for sure. And basically said, you're all terrible. Do better. And left in an angry huff. <laughs> there was we, we established, I think, at that point that uh corinne has a real easy switch yes. to hit. Yep. if i remember correctly evie had to cl- evie had to play the cleanup with that mess <laughs> by going in afterwards and talking to everybody because evie was off doing off doing not uh recon work while you were well that was happening yep yeah it's literally been in my ideals since like i made the character sheet assholes are not tolerated so i felt like i wasn't straying very far from the original concept no it, ma- it really <laughs> did make, it made for some it made for a great couple of sessions oh and to be fair if yeah. my cat turned into like some random dude i would also punch him in the face so i've yeah. never forgiven Vinny. <laughs> <laughs> the, the anger at the end of that session was real. It was an actual real How anger. She, she was furious. I was so betrayed. It was I've so never good. been more betrayed in a session of gaming in my entire life. Ugh, you can't just give your players a dog and then have it turn out to be some jerk video. <laughs> untrue you in fact can and i did <laughs> and while we were at while we were at more face the other thing we discovered was the drug trade and black watch that's true yeah. oh yeah and they were pumping stuff into the air without people knowing it and then mm-hmm. grom and then grom in the fight ring yeah. oh yeah i was in the I fight ring not, i do not remember what the chat who the challenger was, just, was it was it was, it was like a, a teleporting dwarf, dwarf. Very yeah, heated. that's what happened. And yeah. he had a spirit dagger because I took a, the totem of the bear, which makes me immune to so many ty- not immune, but resistant to so many types of damage. Everything but psychic. Psychic was yeah. the only thing. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, so I, I went to get it and it fucking <laughs> dissipated. Pretty sure it was Tungsten's fault. I agree. Yeah, that's uh, you also got bouncy balls. We got to remember that you did win. Listen, we're getting to and that. Stuff, and stuffed animals. We won like getting twelve unicorn plushies, lion plushies, and no, lion they were, plushies. They were different. You chose them. There's like a dragon yeah. one, a unicorn. A dragon. One, there's a bunch of them. I think there was a griffin in there. Yep. Oh, uh, and the most important thing happened. You met Clementine. I did. Yeah. We met all of Cle- we met Clementine down. and all her coworker friends. Uh, Clementine is a like the sweetest rabbit folk. Uh, what did she? Was she the fruit vendor? She was, I believe. So. Yeah, yeah, the sweetest rabbit folk smoothie barista you ever could meet. Uh, I'm the dancer. Corinne instantly <laughs> fell in love. 
um and then got a date to like the dance in the barn that was like a thing at morphe's yep um and yeah i might have embarrassed you at that too that was later i think (laughs) yeah it was actually during the (laughs) date before the date we broke into the owner's personal home Mm -hmm. right by physically tearing off the grating into his return vent. Yeah, yeah, you guys mm-hmm. went up on top of all of the giant flowers and mushrooms and stuff that were around mm-hmm. and went down one of the secret vents that one of them where they were mm-hmm. pumping out these drugs and just slid down it. Like it was a fun tube ride. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Um, we found I, I, believe that, being pumped. I believe the hashtag for that session was how many nat ones can a rogue roll on stealth? It sounds, <laughs> oh my God. That sounds about right. Um, but we I found believe- out that Morphe is not actually still in charge anymore. His son is, uh, who's a changeling and can Pretending look like him. Pretending to be him. Morphe. Yep. Mm-hmm. And so, and they have like a fairy as their partner. And they can mm-hmm. also disguise themselves to be Morphe's old wife mm-hmm. who died. And then Morphe went senile. And because he's a wild magic sorcerer, that's a really bad thing. And so that's how the drug problem happened. Because this kid <laughs> got in deep with the the evil Black fantasy Watch. mafia and then yeah because black watch was the group that screwed evie over before this so evie basically went and backstabbed them can we talk about how hilariously <laughs> psychotic those last like four sentences sound to like <laughs> a random person you wrote it baby. I, I know I it's just it's just you, hilarious as you shit. made it it's real all, <laughs> it's just so funny hearing it out of context being like man if i was Wait. a stranger walking into this right now Vinny, is, <laughs> is, is Mel's, Mel's, dad? Mel's, Mel's dad <laughs> that's not a, that's not a male's business it doesn't matter. <laughs> God. Mel, no i are, think we met your dad no you are <laughs> current currently that's just that's a, a yes a, I saw somebody else. All right, You're just I don't a know. viewer at the oh. moment. Sorry. No, that's you. <laughs> oh, God. What the fuck? Anyways. You're in trouble. I'm never in trouble with Mel. <laughs> anyway, then we went to the dance, and there was a nice bit of a party, but not really, because then oh, a bunch of uh, bunch of cultists <laughs> showed up and caused problems. Yep. Slump and, party. Uh, and... Wait, weren't the cultists undertow? Yes. I think it yeah, was Undertale, no, yeah. yeah. Um, the fight was actually pretty cool. Uh, we it got was a very like, cool fight. Uh, a weird fight. <laughs> big old great. barbarian fella and Corinne like teamed up hmm. on the the guy with their ex. Oh yeah, Ricka showed up at Morphe's. Ricka showed uh, up. You, Ricka, and I and my old instructor. Clem, you, Ricka, and one Clem, of though them. had had like a like uh, combo move happen, which was really fun. Yep, I think during then that was yeah, like the yeah, final yeah. strike. Uh, 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 Ricka, for people, she's a tiefling. Um, she's a shadow monk, um, dragon sorcerer. So like the exact opposite of Corinne, which yeah. is just me playing up the Naruto Sasuke Cor- slash every shonen anime vibe. <laughs> Corinne was Corinne is a potato, and Ricka is the foil. Yep. <laughs> okay. I see what you did there, and I hate it. You're really, what I think it was was that Rika is the Sasuke to Corinne's Bakugo. <laughs> That's a that hurt my brain. So to your so Sora. Sora. But you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> um. Ian, I suppose. Yeah. But anyway, she showed up, and it was awkward because they dated for a while, and then realized, no, nah, we shouldn't do that. <laughs> yep. uh, also, um, Evie's uh, old instructor Felicity showed up as well. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. They were everyone from both of your temples seemed to be here on a different mission than what you guys were originally on. But yep. as you were the only people who, besides like one or two other people that stayed conscious when the entire room was put to sleep, uh, you guys were able to save uh, Fake Morphe from being killed uh you're able to save random people from being killed you started waking people up basically you saved the party good on you guys you did a good job yeah. and that's when they gave us a guide a guide yeah. and when we got our first hotel that's right yep this was yep. hotel stay number one which ended very unfortunately and we set pillows on fire yeah the hotel it staff was 
Was no. that the night I took Clem out to the lake? Yeah. Yes. No, that was, that was, no, that was the return trip, I think. It was? Oh, I think so. I don't remember. I thought the, No, happened. the return trip, you messed with me, and I couldn't actually have the date that I had planned with Clem. Yeah. <laughs> so when I think it date... was after the fight Wait, that I, like, Clem and no, Corinne went out the, to the lake and kind of danced. Because when, when the date actually happened, that was later. Yeah. Because Evie ended up interrupting it because our bosses basically mandated our presence. That was date number two. That was date number two. Uh, either yeah. way, we don't have to get lost but in anyway. super particulars anyways. <laughs> I got after, after your long rest at the hotel slash install, uh, art installation, you guys set off uh, to go find Sage Cinder through the Tangled, uh, the tangled uh, Jungle and the... Um, I forget what the name of the desert was actually too, uh, but you go through a jungle and a desert to try to go find Sage Cinder, where you deal you with. Made friends. <laughs> yeah, you can't you can't gloss over that. I made one. You of my you can just I want you to try so it. <laughs> 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 it's so good. So, so the another... jungle, the jungle was fantastic because we got to meet all like the 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 like crazy dragon dinos that Vinny had cooked up, and that's where we got to meet. No, the fun little armadillo, the white dragon armadillos was later. Yeah. But we met like a bunch of like really cool dragon dinosaurs. This was, was like, the this baby T. Awesome. This was the baby T. Rex. Yeah, yep. and look, we came across a mom and a baby red dragon T. Rex, uh, and and we didn't succeed at stealth. So <laughs> what do we do? The Kenku decides I'm a cast. Speak with animals. I'm gonna go have. I'm gonna go make a friend. And he went and made a friend with the baby T. Rex. <laughs> and then they beat up his mom. And then <laughs> some some like really rude. Uh, Velociraptor showed up, <laughs> and me and the baby T Rex played tag with them aggressively. And then we picked the mom back up and was like, Look. And then we tried to teach her, I think, government stuff or like sociology. We tried <laughs> to make a carnivore not a carnivore anymore, which Grom, like, I, I believe really did not like you doing. I, I, uh, I because she's I, a carnivore, and that's yeah. what she needs to eat. Well, yeah. Because think... the stomach's not gonna handle the fiber Guys, of we can't plant rehab, no. We can't yeah. rehab the entire argument again. <laughs> well, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, don't I think do want to was... point out that Corinne, I pretty much want to say soloed that dragon T Rex. Yes. Because yeah, everyone yeah. else was either like messing up or trying a different thing or not wanting to engage. How many so not I was ones... like, well, full power. How many I not guess. ones did I roll during that? <laughs> A lot. A lot. a lot. You need new dice. It's where the I, meme that, came from. That was, that was roll 20, thank you very much. Yeah. But yes. And, but 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 I made a friend, and if I do remember, I tried teaching the mom T-Rex to be not be a carnivore, but be a dictator. Didn't work. Um, and then I believe we left the, the jungle and got out the rest of it pretty safe, and we got to the edge of the desert, and that's where we all remembered we had no fucking clue what the plot was. Yes, but before that, <laughs> my, this is an important part of the story, and I don't want to hesitate to indulge in it, but my favorite part about the dinosaur forest was that Vinny gave us this NPC guide who basically said, all right, here's stay the path, the path. Yep, let's stay. stay on it. And we were like, then what are you here for? <laughs> because we wanted to meet all the dinosaurs, and this guy was the entire time going, you guys really shouldn't be doing this. And we're just like, we've got it handled, my guy. We've been off the path the whole time. Why are you here? Go home. You're useless. And that's when and this is when I realized that Corinne was very impatient about saving the world. <laughs> he, ran, ran, he ran, ran off. Evie basically ran off after you so you didn't get killed. <laughs> And then the rest yeah. of the group followed at like a snail's pace. But to be fair, ah. I soloed the biggest, baddest I thing in the forest, so there was never yeah. any danger. <laughs> it's true. And then I, uh, I, I yeah, but yeah. Anyway, the, we forgot guides, what the plot was. The, the guide's <laughs> purpose. The guide's purpose so, is to make sure no one poaches or kills the animals. You're telling me so, you're, you're basically on a safari and the guy's like, you know, stay on the truck, stay on the road, don't mm -hmm. engage with things. And you were like, I mean, fuck you actually, uh, and suplexed the lion and then ran off into the Sahara. Yeah. On your <laughs> um, I think we have Accurate. That's 100% that, accurate. Uh, That's exactly I, what happened. Uh, one part Jurassic Park, one part Jumanji. Yep. 
I respect it was, this. It was wonderful. I, I, and then we got to everyone's favorite portion, which was the desert part. The where desert. We all got to deal we, with riddles and uh, yeah, we met the real villain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my patron, the, the biggest jerk of the campaign. He is lovely. <laughs> It's absolutely lovely. He tried, uh, to diff- he tried to teach you guys different points of view of like morality and ethics. He's trying to protect the people. Oh, yeah. He's back. I think I caught him a different point of re- of morality <laughs> in that doing nothing is sometimes worse. <laughs> I mean, I believe e- I believe one of those puzzles ended with Evie basically telling Ricka sometimes the only way to win is don't play. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which was the last one because Rekka was stuck at like almost like the last one because she was trying to fight giant sand uh, sentinels that just kept appearing. Yep. Yep. And she couldn't. She is she is more <laughs> headstrong than even Corinne is, and just like would just keep fighting and could not did not understand that an off switch was needed. But eventually, yep. you guys helped her figure that out. <laughs> yep. So we saved um, my rival, uh, and yeah. That's like, so we're going on and on, but Alchemedes was this really cool, great ancient dragon NPC you don't have to that pretend. Vinny thought up. You don't have to pretend, it's fine. No, he, it was a really cool idea. And then Vinny totally just like played the wrong card with it for Corinne, where he was like, okay, well, I've just met you. I'm going to put you through a series of tests. Uh, but we can only do one a day for some reason, even though you could certainly just have given us all the tests in like three hours because it took us very little time to do them all. And then, uh, so instead of like an hour or two in the desert, we had to wait around for three fucking days while our <laughs> continent is about to explode and kill a lot of people. And so this Corinne is, got this really is showing that this dragon. The lesson, the lesson of patience definitely <laughs> was not patience learned. Patience has failed. Yeah, but yeah. you know, know, you know what's not argument. important in a lesson of patience? When a city is going to be blown to smithereens <laughs> any moment. We got it there in time. It's not it's important. important. It's not, if we had had a few okay. extra days, that might have been great. Just and then there was, and then there was really <laughs> care about that city. <laughs> and then there was the tour that we the tour uh, at the next juncture. Mm. We we were supposed to take the tour that one of the dragon folk was supposed to take us on, and most of us just didn't bother. Oh, we just sorry. skipped the that tour. Was, that was so funny. And then you guys asked, like, four or five questions later that, like, literally the guy was just like, well, if you took the tour, I could have given you that answer for me, and it was great. We were like, no, fuck you. No, fuck no, you, guys. Um, this is, but this is in the probably... desert, we found a very cool item. That's true. Oh, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. The, we found the... a hot lake. And yeah. uh, oh yeah, did some magic and got burned, but we got a flaming broken, sword out of a broken, lake mm. and a broken and a broken ship. Mm-hmm. Yep. yep, and more, more disconnected, more disconnected maps to add to Evie's collection. Yep, yep, yep. and that, this is where the armadillos were. Yep, and the armadillos. The armadillos. And um, we ended <laughs> up saving the armadillos. We saved the armadillos. <laughs> Adopted uh, two of them, yep. <laughs> but the flame sword was broken. They're my friends. Off. Yeah, it was. Cool. I don't want to adopt them. We're friends. It became Dennis's Yule sure. log, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. It went yeah, into my was, lantern apartment. There was a yep. yeah. There was a flame tongue sword that was on the bottom of a lake, keeping it ever boiling. Uh, and uh, they found I forget what the solution was, but you guys figured out the solution to get the sword out. Uh, um, Dennis kept it in his miniature apartment, basically, which is in his lantern. Yep. Um, I think it was just Dennis leapt in, got really hurt, but had magic to get out quickly, right? Dennis used armor of Agathus plus um, resist elements plus a uh, uh, the the fortress, the Darren's instant fortress, Mm. which unstuck it, and then just took it. Yeah. (laughs) Dennis used a lot of nonsense. Yeah. Dennis used his repertoire of magic because. Uh, yes. FYI, in a campaign for anything under level 16, Dan's intra- instant fortress can really break some shit. Yes. Mm-hmm. But it got buried in the... But I remember we had an issue where it got almost got buried in the sand. 
Like there was you, a sandstorm. I think you guys purposefully did that to keep yourself out of the heat. Well, mm-hmm. we might we, have done we that. Used it, yeah, as our like night or daytime because we went nocturnal in the desert because mm-hmm. it was easier. I, I also just remember, <clears throat> I just remember being an elf and therefore not sleep it, not needing as much rest time meant I had to guard the fortress at mm-hmm. various points. But that yep. let you work yeah. on your maps, which you were happily doing, anyways. Yeah. And we got the first look at um, Corinne's angelic guide, Lee. Because mm-hmm. yep. with, with, with ridiculous passive perception, nothing was getting by Evie anyway. Yeah, <laughs> and it turns yep. out uh, Lee is a celestial servant of Helm who just sometimes takes over Widget's body to converse with Corinne about her goals and mission and like encourage her. <laughs> it's just a chill yeah. dude. Just chill there, dude there, yeah. there to help. Pretty, you. pretty chill angel. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, good, a good bud. Um, um, so you guys got onto Alchemides. You guys didn't take the tour. You guys I, I, found the prophet. I don't think yep. anyone explained that Alchemides about him again. was a city-sized <laughs> dragon. Yeah, I guess that should yeah. be explained a bit. So this um, so Alchemides is, in a very brief explanation, is basically the next chosen dragon to become Bahamut. He is the next platinum dragon, meaning that he grows. He ever grows. So he is the size of like a mountain range and holds a whole city on his back plus Mm -hmm. extra. And the whole city is actually just dragons in disguise as humanoids. Uh, It is a safe haven for dragons of all different types where they uh, grow, learn, stay safe from being hunted or uh, hunting other people. Mm -hmm. And Um, honestly, pretty chill dude when you're not an asshole to him. (laughs) Yeah, which yeah, happened. He was an asshole. First. <laughs> he, was lovely. he was like, I gotta protect my people in the city. And we're there literally saying, We're here to protect people in a city. <laughs> That's why we're here. Yeah, but But I gotta make sure you're good is... people. What do you think we're doing here? <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, bad people could have gotten as far as you guys got. Like that's <clears throat> I mean yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. I still think his one test a day thing was just like a weird, like patience. arbitrary thing so, that he chose. Kieran and Natalie hate patience. Got yes. it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which is no, because listen, I was fine goofing around in Morphe's for well the time we had there, but when it was like, okay, we're almost there, and like. We goofed around in Morphe's. We probably shouldn't waste any more time here in the desert. Like yeah, really now is the time where we should that. really focus. He didn't know. Done. He didn't know Where's... that we goofed around in Morphe's. <laughs> it's not <laughs> Karen's fault. Oh, it's not this anybody's is... fault. Just, everyone was being a dick to each other. It's past the buck. Anyways, well, to be fair, if you're a dragon god in training, sometimes you make a little oopsie every once in a while mm-hmm. sometimes mm-hmm. you make an oopsie i like how fallible hey. both of these like nearly lawful good hey, characters Vinny. are <laughs> what's up see now i have a question sure how does evie get a patron well Ooh. tell me what you want a patron of and we multi-class make it it's, it's, it's... i don't know <laughs> well that's helpful Mar- say... <laughs> we'll figure it like, out like yeah. the overwatch character uh, not gonna lie that mercy. not gonna lie that's actually part of that was part of where some of Evie's stuff came from, including Blackwatch. Nice. Yeah, was... And when Vinny got told that afterwards he face palmed at me. No, I didn't know what Blackwatch was, uh, but I'm fine with it. I don't Power. Overwatch can come at me, they suck. Um <laughs> You Bobby Coding, <laughs> no one likes you anyway. Anyways. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you guys got Alchemedes. You found the prophet and his bird friend, um, Minnie. And um, Minnie was far more awesome than not Laz. Hold on. So we found the prophet, but this whole time, Dennis thought he was going to meet his very good friend and wizard teacher who was, you know, great every day. It's a, it's a cool guy. It's, it's one of his best friends. And no, no, what we got was some this guy who's sad and I hated him. And he shouldn't have been there. And he wasn't Laz. And Dennis was very upset. And rightfully so. Because Saluzon 
was also a piece of work. <laughs> it was, he, was, he was just this, very... This so-called yeah. prophet who was supposed to know what to do was an absolute space case and couldn't seem to focus on anything or form complete sentences without like, he was a taking a big drunk. drag on his pipe. He was a drunk. Or at least yeah. he was... <clears throat> I mean, for the most part. He was inebriated in some form. Um, he was a hot mess and not yes. a useful person for a group trying to... Minnie you know. was more useful <laughs> until she kind of turned her back on us. Wow. God, that was anyway, so funny, too. Anyway, we he's got, he got the we got we got got so cool And at that point, Corinne was like, well, we got him. Can we go? Because I'm going. And left. And yep. she leapt off the back of the Flying Dragon City turned on her wings and her rocket power speed and just blasted away and was like, I'll meet you at Morphe's. I'm going to see my girlfriend. <laughs> and she flipped him off. And yeah. I did flip off the dragon. I was like, so, do better. Corinne went on a date <laughs> while, while everyone Crazy. else played catch up. <laughs> yeah, I think, Corinne, Dennis, you also leapt from the back of the dragon? I did, but I made a point to hit the ground really hard. For... <laughs> Because, because, <laughs> and everyone else used uh, Featherfall. I'm pretty sure. <clears throat> uh, but yep. you guys all eventually got back <laughs> to Morphe's Magical Mile. Spent <laughs> one more night there. Because uh, I think it date. was the thing that Alchemides was gonna like have us just land in the desert and then walk back. And I yep. was like, no, you <laughs> wasted three days of our time. <laughs> no, what he was going to do was land closer to the Tangled. Oh. And during the night, because he does not move except during the night, but you didn't mm. want to wait for the night. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Jump. <laughs> then, yep. Yep. So yes, back to Morphe's, guys. Yep. Uh, fucked with Black Watch, I believe, and then got their ship. Uh, like connived your way to become workers right. on the ship. We we kind of bribed slash lied our way onto the ship. Yeah, yeah. Like, anyway, it was it was undertow, but yeah, no, promises was... of a reward. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. that absolutely. They needed they needed hired muscle, and were willing to pay handsomely for it. Mm. We needed yep. money and a way to get there. And oh, I... yeah, finish. And Evie basically will basically volunteered the party to act at the party and Ricka to basically defend the ship. Yeah, we at this point, Ricker was like it. our, what, sixth, six, fifth member? Uh, Twelfth, <laughs> including uh, all no. the animals. Sixth, because six, Bear is our fifth member. But uh, basically, if the crew yeah. didn't survive, it didn't matter. The ship and the goods were, that all we were hired to protect was the ship yeah. itself and the goods. If the crew didn't survive, oh well. But I didn't promise Morphe's, anything. We, we met our, well, we met with our teachers, eventually. After I tried to go on a date with Clementine and Alchemides sent one of his followers to mess with me the whole time yep. <laughs> and disrupt yep. it, which and is the date. an amazing stroke of petty versus petty that now has just defined Corinne and Alchemides' relationship. Yep. I think yep. it's more a Natalie and Vinny relationship. <laughs> <laughs> There's bleed. There's definitely bleed. There's bleed there. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, no, uh, and the, our, our monk instructors told us about the, the fire orb thing. Mm -hmm. yep. They basically told us the real mission and yeah, the plot they, again. They explained because Vinny the was like, please remember it this time, you they, idiots. <laughs> yeah, they explained the elemental orbs, which were semi, kind of like the Infinity Stones. That's kind of how like the whole explanation of it went, was very much Wong waving his hands and being like, there were these six sources of power that created the universe. But, yep. but it was the elemental orbs. Uh, you got told about the fire orb and how it was over in Tenereau slash the city of La Carac, where you guys ended up going. Um, how it needed not to fall into the wrong hands. Uh, blah, 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 stop the evil, blah, blah, blah. Um, mm -hmm. And you as a group then set out to do that in addition to the other thing, which was to stop the city from exploding. And so we, we got a, an illicit we, boat. We did, left. we did all of that is the short version. This is the very short version. Um, but um, we, we can hear some of the stories along the way because... Yep. We can't forget you meeting, meeting Graves, uh, Crypt, and Tomb, because that was another experience. That yeah. was an experience. That was nothing. 
they were some some they you were know, a piece of work they were something yeah they were something but um, we met a warforged who had a boat and that's right and a dog mm-hmm. and uh, then there was and they all had had for machines and there was a there was an evil doctor yeah was this the word was there an evil doctor there, there was an oh evil, yeah the, was the, a yeah. surgeon so the sur- <laughs> they, uh, there was yeah. the surgeon who was the surgeon there was who a was... surgeon who was committing torture yes and we stopped that and someone in the party i mean uh no one in the party killed him and threw chunks of him as chum to the sharks that that <laughs> didn't definitely happen right gromagal <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Commander I'm just confirm. upset that I didn't get to do Lord's it. I wasn't aware I'm that anyone died on that ship. Exactly. Uh, I'm just great. saying. Uh, you did save uh, <laughs> an elven individual from being tortured. Um, yep. Eventually, you did arrive at Teneral after meeting a warforged creature who was riding a warfor a giant warforged called Ship and had a additional warforged pet called Dog. Um, that was where a bark right. came from. Yep. Um, and we stuck the, the flame sword in the ship and fixed it. Yep. Um, there was. They were like, as they were traveling, they were pumping out all this like really gross pollution into the waters, and Gromagal was like, Gromagal "I'm a ready to murder." Um, so I had to save a life from Gromagal. Yep. Uh, I do love that because it was literally Corinne like flew I'm away. I have a bunch yep. of fish lives. Yeah, I I flew like away from the ship and ran across the water like a half a mile just to be like, my guy, you gotta turn around. <laughs> there is bad news coming for you if you keep going this way. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, and I believe we he he docked with the ship and was going to and it was a either you fix it and stop polluting the waters or. You, you, your grandma goes gonna rip you in half. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and the mm-hmm. the sheer happenstance of my Yule log being able to use be used as like core to power the power ship was like the first step into um, Dennis being a the the the, the, the thing the like artificer. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that it was in person. person. I what? think it was the end of that when Evie gave you the pirate hat. It was. That's mm-hmm. still on, like, that's, that, yeah. he still has pirate, his pirate hat. Pirate, doctor, <laughs> artificer, surgeon, uh, Barber. Barber. <laughs> Barber. Yeah. Um, you gotta specify, ghost ghost yeah, you have the specified ghost barber, that's <laughs> I learned how to be a barber from a ghost, therefore I'm a ghost barber. I can't, yeah, I can't barber specific. on people. Yep. Just, except you to. did, except you did on bear. <laughs> you did. You didn't eat enough bear's I, hair at some point. I ghost barbered bear, which means nothing happened. <laughs> <laughs> it's very sad. Anyways, you guys eventually landed in Tineral, where... Well, um, no, we technically didn't. I ran ahead again, because that's my thing, is well, I just yeah. run ahead. And, yeah. and we... I was like, hey, guard of Tineral? Yeah. Some pirates are coming. And Will then you help the... me arrest them? <laughs> and then there was the... <laughs> then there was the uh, realization... Of all sorts That's of things. That's why I killed that guy. One of the. I waited them... until you were off the ship and yes, to kill did. that guy. One sec, guys. <laughs> guys, tiefling... guys, guys, guys. Sorry. What are you saying, Evie? The tiefling stole the thing and tried to fly off, and Evie basically was having none of that bullshit. Oh, that was when the oh, whole yeah. kill the druid thing happened. Yeah. And Fight the broke gaunt- out. And the gauntlets came into play. And the gauntlets came into play. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was another very interesting fight. You guys had, like, that was a very unique okay. fighting situation. I mean, we split the party, like, what, four ways? Yeah. Something like that. Everyone got, got real messed up. Uh, it was no, insane. Split up. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, you, a... may, hmm. you ran ahead, found Jasjot, who would later become um, the paramour of Rika, <laughs> uh, which is just very <laughs> funny. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, you guys were able to start clear, cleaning house, uh, which you did very well with uh, taking out uh, trying to take out grave no you did eventually take out graves uh tomb and crypt i think you killed one of them and the other two survived or something or maybe i think we survived. let them all live <clears throat> um you did i'm pretty sure you no you also found the druid underwater yeah more importantly we found the druid who is like turns out a council member in the city mm-hmm. and then uh yeah corinne chased after a hawk first mm-hmm. 
knocked them out of hawk form. They dropped into the water and became a, a shark. shark. Yep. Kept following them, punched them to death as a shark. Then they went whale. Yep. I think so. Punched a whale to death. Then they went giant shark. <laughs> yep. And she punched that to death. <laughs> yeah. And then, like, dude, stop. And you're really then punched punching the druid out. out. Yeah, in order to like I, knock them out and carry them back to shore as I a prisoner. I don't remember if after a certain point Evie basically just basically kept took over to keeping the ship stable at that point. Yeah, you were mm -hmm. you were you were using uh I think flaming sphere or something to fight um I think grave on the ship while the other two were dealing with crypt and tomb like right off off Sounds on the about docks. right. You guys were mm -hmm. all very split up, but you were all were doing you a good job. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, you guys uh, found out this plot to fuck with the king and the council. You stopped it. It was more drug-related stuff. Um, and then you eventually went and talked to King Rajul, who became best friends with Dennis, like, in two minutes. Yep. Um, yep. <laughs> and the Which rest of was you fantastic. Got along. Uh, the uh -huh. rest of you got along pretty well, too. So you addressed the council, talked to the council. Uh, to sum up that part pretty quickly, because there was a lot of talking and back and forth there for a while, uh, you learned about a way to get down to this to the inner city um, that was underneath um, the in the volcano that was apparently covered up at some point in history, yep. and a uh, major way to save uh, the ghost town, which somehow did involve the ghost barber becoming very useful at one point. <laughs> yep. Oh, and we made Arvin before we went into the volcano. You did. Right, you guys, you had like a daybreak where you guys artificed a bit. And Arvin, and I don't know, did you ever name your thing, Dennis, that you made? No. Dennis made a... You didn't? Uh, a uh, that's surprising. Nope, Dennis didn't want to I thought want it, it was like Skitter or something. I don't think so. I don't think Dennis ever named it. Oh. So, um... Yeah, no, Dennis never I named it. I do remember it being described as a homunculi. It was. It was a mechanical it was one, an yeah. atro I remember it being described as an atrocity. And, 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 we learned that Minnie was the prophet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you guys were fighting with a bird. Surprise, yeah. surprise. One, one of yeah. you tried to swat yeah. away. <laughs> at, at, one of you swatted away at Minnie. We were like, shoo, right. bird. And the bird fucking nearly killed Dennis. <laughs> yep. And Dennis was like, what the fuck? And then we started beating up a bird because yep. that's that's how the blaster gets that, down. That is... <laughs> that's what happens when you give a bird the stats of a rogue who's great. Yep. And, and I is... think this is around the time where we learned that Gromagul could blast. And we came up yep. with the name Team Blaster. Yep. 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 It's the first time I used uh, Eldritch Blast. Because yep. I made a deal before when you guys jumped off of or you guys were going off doing something on Alchemides. I, I was talking to him about finding him a new place to settle. Mm -hmm. oh. And he gave me a seed to plant. In exchange for this, he gave me magical powers. And custom my arcane trick custom yep. homebrew warlock class, which, hey, if you join the Discord, yeah. you can actually find a link to that in the book that I'm going to be releasing soon. Anyways. Uh, awesome. Do it. <laughs> cool. nice. Do it. Uh, Become the patronee yeah. of this jerk. <laughs> yeah. Look at him. Look at him. He's cute. Do it. <laughs> um, so yeah, after you guys did that, yeah, you guys went to the uh, city underneath the city. I forget the name of all the cities that I named because there were so many of them for this. Um, <laughs> yeah, they're written down. Yeah, they're written down. It was weird, there. though. It was the Wait, city where it looked like Duskburn. a hand had like Wasn't scraped inside... across the... Duskburn. Duskburn, Duskburn. is... Wasn't this, this so? This was not inside the volcano. No, this is the yeah. inside the volcano we're talking about. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. um, I think you guys did everything that you could on the outside real quick. Because you're like, we're gonna speed run the outside of the city, and then you guys just went down. I I, I do want to add that mm -hmm. we did get a hotel, and before the city blew up, Dennis committed art on the hotel. <laughs> we're calling um, it committed art. That is yeah. the, this is what we're calling it now. Yeah. Um. But you also had the king's consort doing this with you. I I think so. Yeah, you did. Yes, you did. Yeah, because that um, was a, that was its own thing. Yeah, no, yeah, they were hanging out. They um, yeah, they they like chaos. So, um, yeah, you guys went underground. Uh, boy, a lot happened under there. That was like 
five sessions worth of it so really much was. shit. So much stuff yep. happened in the volcano. Um, but I feel like it was basically Ghost Barber, and then I rolled really good on a hearing perception check, which meant we skipped a bunch of stuff you had mm -hmm. planned. There was a bunch of platforming with lava. And then there was basically the mind control bullshit. It was right. it was platforming with lava, but then I rolled really good, and Vinny was like, okay, yeah, you go right to the place you're supposed to go to. Mm -hmm. And we saw these ghosts being like, well, no, we saw golems of fire being created and then dying basically as soon as they were born and ghosts of gnomes? Yeah. Dwarves? Yeah, gnome. It, a little bit. It was mainly, yeah. mainly gnomes. Anyway, ghosts would just come out of these golems as they fell apart and just be like, ah! And then they went and r hit the wall of the volcano with their fists. And this had been going on for ages because there were so many ghosts. Mm -hmm. Uh... So, yeah, we broke into that weird factory. Yeah, 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 he broke into like the forge, which was like in its heyday, like the best forge around. But you know, since it was in a volcano, they got sealed off. Not many people mm -hmm. came down to it, uh, and everyone in this place suffocated to death uh, because they blocked off the top of the goddamn volcano. Uh, by the way, all of you guys would have eventually died if you stayed down there too long. I would have had you guys rolling breathing checks. <laughs> You did actually. Yeah. You started causing us to gain like exhaustion or something for uh, okay. smoke inhalation. Like, okay, because I was like, that was definitely a thing I planned. I just didn't know if we ever actually got to it. But yeah. Oh, we also we... had the fire resistance potions, and I think that yeah, negated that, a yeah. lot of you the like, have... environmental stuff. Oh, yeah, which saved you guys a lot of stuff. And you guys. Yeah. Evie also absorbed some of it because that's a thing she can do. Sure. Yep. Um, and we. So we ended up getting, we had, there was like a little puzzling moment where while we were trying to get into the forge, um, where we definitely <laughs> dealt with it in a sane and responsible manner. Yeah, 100%. And nothing bad happened. Yeah. Um, Instant fortresses really are. Look, I are used it like three times and none of the times were broken. They were just stupid. I know. It was just very <laughs> funny every time you used it. That we were just like, oh, well, we got to get through this locked door. I guess I'll just make a fortress appear. In front of it. <laughs> it wasn't even. It, we were already through. I know. No. We were all, yes. We would have been through yes. in like 30 seconds. And Dennis yeah. was impatient because he's been hanging around Corinne too much. I'm not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. So you guys got through. You met uh, the. Um, Basically, the an descendant, ancestor, descendant of an, an older forge or from this forge who was basically the last of her line, who was trying to heal these souls uh, using with an item that she didn't even know she was using, uh, which was a piece of thread from Istis's, uh magic kit related to fate uh, as she was trying to hammer these souls back into the earth itself to make new bodies for them. But unfortunately for her, she didn't know that she was doing it wrong because um, she was like 12 and didn't know magic. Um, uh, and this is the time where Dennis decided to use see invisibility or true sight or something and then like or detect magic and just like saw magic. and just saw this uh, thread of like potential. <laughs> the, the thread of fate from like the Luma fate, like the big one. Yeah, all, all capitals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all capitals. And then I stole it because you allowed me to do that. Oh yeah, we should have never mentioned, but everyone had really weird uh, gifts uh, slash items that they all got. Um, specifically, Gromagul was bear. Uh, the others got tattoos and um, arm uh, bands for their magic and uh, fighting. And Dennis got an item that was stealing attunement from other. Uh, stealing attunement from other people, not getting the item, but just getting the attunement attached to him, meaning uh, something that he never used this entire game, the entire 28 sessions. But <laughs> this one time he used it, <laughs> it just fucked it all up in the best way possible. It was, it was great. an incredible play. Honestly, yes. play of the game. I Now that we've like gone over and talked about everything, play of yep. the game stealing that thread. It really was. Because so much fucking shit hinged on having I was gonna that say, later on. He used on. it three times, and each time it kind of saved your guys' life. Yeah. <laughs> Well. And though, although I will say, I will say when he, I will say the end gate, the last one, when it got woven into the wish, yeah, mm, yeah, because it got woven in, it got woven in literally with a little bit of everybody. That was the second one. 
That was the there second was, one? Yeah, the last one got used uh, in the very, very last fight. Mm -hmm. the one i the one i remember is you basically took a piece of the a dragon piece of, you took a piece of literally the entire party including bear and wove it in yep yeah i think that was but the, i think that the, i think that was the third one that was the third use because the the diamond was the first one right Yep. right because right at well we should not jump ahead let's, right let's, yeah we're so jumping. you stole the attunement and then we went outside, or we took the little girl ghost outside, and was like, "This is gonna be rough, but uh, here's what's actually been happening, and we're sorry." And she was real sad, and we had a moment on a cliff, and then some dude showed up, and I was like, "You should go back inside, kid." And then basically just called you ran shot, off like, again. You. <sighs> rocket it um, off and immediately engaged. <laughs> he was headed towards us. You could have waited for him to get there and I could have been there for the like first three rounds, Corinne. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> this guy took advantage of a so little was kid. <laughs> so was he. It, the it same. Very... Fire arc will be the arc yeah. where Corinne learns patience. Nope. <laughs> um, <laughs> so they, so yeah, you guys ended up finding Boss who was a, a red tiefling with some some unique properties and abilities uh one of the things that he used was a device that uh constantly produced um magma elementals that uh you guys on the ground had to fight while corinne was dealing with uh boss in the air so there was basically another pretty decent fight where you guys had like two different things going on you guys on the ground were getting very hurt but this is where dennis was like ah, let's just fuck with fate and see what, what happens here <laughs> the first time to figure out what the heck i could do with this string and turned i think uh like a 50 square foot block of lava into solid diamond that was like i don't know two feet thick or three feet thick or something thick enough where we could walk on it is it is it very very thick yeah oh okay i did a thing and then it helped us get closer to the guys so that like people could beat them up yeah but it also it turned all of the magma elementals frozen into diamond as well which is the That's other right. important thing so it just completely dis uh, dis uh immobilized wasn't all of that, these things wasn't the reason that um he used some magic item and then summoned the fire elementals and didn't someone make him drop it or something in the he lava dropped it into the lava yep that's how they produced is, is him dropping it down into it okay gotcha and so and I, I think it was by you turning the lava into diamond it because i didn't think work anymore. i also vaguely thought i went in and got it you did i think that was the next session you tried to go down to grab it to break it which is what i think like the start of like literally the next session was mm -hmm. um, sounds about right yeah so um, you ended up breaking it so it didn't produce more of these magma creatures yeah, yeah. And then Again, another good fight. You guys did good there too. That was a good fight. Was, it was so was much a, fun. I have it written down day, somewhere, and I need to go back and listen to like <laughs> Corinne versus Boss because that was epic. We, we also we also have to say this is the beginning of a very long day for this group. Oh my god! Because <laughs> mm -hmm. well, this was all one day. I'm pretty sure I'll at the end of me now. like that at the end of that day, every single one of us had zero anythings. Pretty, any ability spell health gone hit die we were out of hit die yeah like <laughs> everything because i I, th I i vaguely remember at the end of that you uh you asked me how the hell do you still have key points and i was like my gauntlets are are don't run on key points and i've been abusing that yeah yep. i mean it's a good thing to have it saves you those key points for when you really really need them yep. <laughs> yep. uh but yeah um, you guys yeah, continue. having to like run through an entire character sheet's worth of stuff really played into the whole anime vibe that we had going the entire time anyway, <laughs> though, because it was like, OK, well, I haven't used this yet. Blah, power up <laughs> sequence. And then the next villain Vinny would throw at us and be like, well, well, I had saved this in the wings. Blah, another thing. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so. so I think we beat up that guy. The, the the guy who was taking advantage of the ghost kid. Which... We beat up that guy, and then I and think... then we left. You handed him off to like a random prison warden. Yeah, right. <laughs> yep. Just how he then escaped later. And then we beat him up again. <laughs> no, Gromagol beat him up again. But th but yeah. how did we? Because we thought it was good, right? We thought originally that like everything was fixed, 
And so we left. Something because else, was like something else happened, and in the distraction of the something else happening, he he left. There was uh, so three things happened all at once. There was a suicide or a um, murder attempt on assassination attempt on the king. That's yep. what it was. Um, there was an appearance from one of the people from the ship that we arrived on. I think, right. Uh, yes. I think one of them was trying to escape, yeah. Okay. yeah. Corinne saw something went in the volcano. down to the volcano to investigate, and something happened. You uh, oh. saw an explosion. You guys figure it took a bit for you guys to figure out that there was a vent leading <laughs> from the volcano all the way down into a farther cavern. Because what... Uh, yeah, we, we beat Boss and then had the wish thread and went back to the king to be like, hey, we have a solution. I think that's the progression that it took. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's when Dennis helped fix the wish that the king had that was like a monkey's paw wish yeah. to make it not yeah. a monkey's paw. It was like a DC 35 check or something it was insane, ridiculous. Yeah. It was yeah. ridiculous. And I thought wonderful. everything yeah. into it. Literally. And it was like, we had to... The king originally had to make a wish that wouldn't benefit him. And so our first plan was like, well, he should just make a selfish wish that like his kingdom is not his kingdom anymore. And we were going to like scatter the inhabitants across the world and basically break up the kingdom. So it would detriment him. He wouldn't be king anymore, but everyone would be safe. And then through like clever wording, uh, we came up with the wish that like every single soul in general will be protected and saved yeah uh so everyone went ethereal for a while as yep. uh, yeah bad as things the happened exploded. but as the mountain exploded and everything calmed down uh you guys split up to check things out again and when you guys went to make sure everything was okay yeah th that's when the three different fights broke off at the same time but it yeah. but the mountain didn't explode <laughs> grom used his thing i yes. planted the seed before no the the it exploded, but I yeah. planted. Oh, the but then seed. right after. Yeah. So afterwards, um, you just regrew like, everything. <laughs> it just regrew into like this tropical, yeah. fucking mountainous area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Evie got Evie got wings for a session, and that was awesome. Yeah. So that mm -hmm. that happened, I think, right after, because uh, I think it was Dennis and Corinne went down to check the volcano to check out the diamond, and when you went to go down and check out the diamond you saw the crack that showed the explosion of the fire dragon coming out. And that's where mm -hmm. you guys dealt with the fire dragon. <laughs> it was actually Corinne and Rika because Dennis had like left. Dennis, right. was totally Dennis had done his Irish like, goodbye. I'm going off alone. Yep. I'm saying goodbye. And it was really sad. But then you rolled really poorly and got lost and wound up in the volcano anyway. <laughs> yep. yep, that's exactly. That's, there it is. Uh, which is good because it made that fight from it being like an an adult near ancient red dragon versus level, two monks <laughs> versus two monks made it turned into like a baby dragon wiremling who was just kind of pissy. Um, yep, because that was the second bit. wish. That was the right. That was the third. That was the last one. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. He used the last <laughs> bit of thread to um, turn the dragon back into a, I guess a, a kid. Or yeah. something like that. And it turned into like a 14 year old, which in dragon terms is still scary. Yeah. Not as scary, but still scary. Uh, Less scary. Uh, Defeatable, yeah. uh, Defeatable, one could yeah. say. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, given that we hadn't had a rest yet still. This is like after maybe a short rest or something. Yeah. But... Uh, and Evie talked to one of the, uh, I think the glass dragon, one of the glass dragons uh, from Ooh. Alchemedes and gained uh, like the fly spell that produced um, like chromatic um, uh, glass shard wings for her to fly. And then so Gromagal and Evie were fighting on top while I think you two were fighting down below. Mm -hmm. And y'all all resolved your fights like mm -hmm. pretty, pretty. Oh, I almost went down. I almost died, guys. Yeah, yeah. you did. I almost yeah. died. We all almost died. Uh huh. I mean, I was a death save away from dying. Ooh. And Bear I convinced think... one of the like council <clears throat> members to come and help you. That was right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember that. And I Stick refused. The bear. <clears throat> and Evie refused to kill the the asshole. Instead, brought him back to 
for as far as she was concerned, face trial. Mm-hmm. So you guys basically, uh, all three faced three different mini bosses at the same time, and it was insane. You won. De- Dennis got so desperate he had to use that spell. Vicious mockery. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> So desperate. I was like, "Yep, what's that spell?" I know, right? Like it, that spell, of vicious mock. And I, I, I think, mm-hmm. Grom, you did roll your final death save just to see what it would have been, and you, you failed it. You would have died. I would have died. Yeah. And none of you know we're vivifying. <laughs> save for the bear, and we wouldn't have been there. Yeah. And you know what? I would have just continued playing as bear. Look, which would have been <laughs> amazing. still the best choice. Yep. But yeah, um, for those of you who stuck around for this hour-long explanation, that is a summary of what Fire Arc was. And That's if not it... the end, Vinny. Yeah. A little bit more. That's not the okay. end, Vinny, because Fine. you didn't let it be the end, Vinny. <laughs> no. Yeah. I had to it's point dead. out that we missed things. You pointed out that we missed that Sailor's on wasn't a useless piece of shit. He was like an important pivotal NPC of some kind and was pulling some weird magic to open a portal to God Realm. And we were like, the fuck, dude? Oh, yeah. (laughs) And don't do that. And so, yeah. Evie went through through the portal on her own because because why the fuck not? Because she's been hanging around Corinne too much. (laughs) Bad influence. (laughs) Asked a bunch of questions and then said... Yeah, I'll be back. And went back to get the rest of the party, because that was something. Yeah, so you guys yep. ran into Soluzan, um, who actually only had one arm. Apparently the other arm was an uh, animated form of what a spell scroll was to transport or open up a hole to let him go through it to go to the like frozen palace where the rest of them... Uh, the rest of the party members slash gods or whatever were hanging out. Because um, he took oh, the orb, gods. didn't he? He, he had yeah. uh, taken the fire orb. Yeah, he's he the... took the fire orb that we were trying to get and keep protected. And we were like, what the fuck? What are you doing? And he wouldn't tell us what he was doing. And it was scary magic stuff. And we were like, is he a bad person, Vinny? What? <laughs> Vinny is like yet another <laughs> instance of Ange rolling a nat one to try and take the fire orb back. Uh... Yeah. Oh god, yeah, that was funny as hell too. Uh, and yeah, then you, what was the other thing? You guys uh, t- talked to a couple gods for a little bit. Oh, also, yeah, you got we to talked meet to some your god. gods. You got to meet. Well, uh, yeah, earlier when Corinne helped word the wish, uh, uh-huh. she got to meet Helm in like their original form, which was this like cool huntress uh, mm-hmm. archer. And uh, yeah, they were like, "You're doing a good job." Also, this guy Dennis. Man, is he tricky. <laughs> um but yeah, but then and I had to use my spell scroll that I'd been saving the whole campaign because I had nothing left, so I just popped spirit guardians on myself and like showed up with like basically uh like double team copies of Corinne, just spiritual versions of herself like flickering in and out of existence as her spirit guardians. Mm-hmm. That was super fun. I should level up and actually learn that spell. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a good spell. It's a good spell. But um, yeah, and then we met some gods, and they were like, "Wow, you're the first people to actually come talk to us." Yeah. And we were like, "Well, the job wasn't finished." <laughs> <laughs> you guys uh, talked to, I believe, Mistra um, and a few other gods, and they explained to you that they were gathering these orbs with a purpose. Um, and, uh, you guys were like, oh, well, y'all are pretty chill, <laughs> and we're down <laughs> to help, <laughs> which was basically the sum up of the conversation. <laughs> um, so then you guys are like, okay, cool, we're gonna help the gods, but also we have this giant cash check we need to, like, uh, check we, we need, need to, to cash. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and that kind of, su- that, as close as we can, sums up that part of the fire arc, <laughs> and then you guys had this huge payday, um, and we have like a few minutes left uh, before we go insanely over. So, um, before, uh, is there any other things you guys want covered related to either character or the arc, overarching stuff itself you want to explain oh, before God. I quickly just make a wizard with you guys? Uh, bear is best. Bear's the bear best. Bear is best. 
Karen yeah. and Rom kind of settled their beef. And uh, now we're all friends and we have a lot of money and airships. Yep. And we're going to go do jobs for so gods because the they need people. Mm -hmm. Do you yeah. explain that to the people that are working for you? That we're on no. a holy mission from gods? Yeah. Uh, nah. Probably not. <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine after the uh, the um, shit show that is rescuing Malin that you guys sat down and were like, so we're helping out all these gods. And this is all everything that's happened to us up until now. Will you help us out for a lot of gold, ridiculous amount of gold? And I'd be like, yeah. mm. money? <laughs> I heard um, money. I didn't heard hear money. Anything, anything you said before that. I'm not going to lie. I Dennis most likely forgot. That you're on a mission from God? <laughs> yeah. It Amazing. wouldn't have been something that stuck. He would have been like, I, I get to go hang out with my friends and fly in airships and stuff and see cool things. Aww. I don't care who we're working for. <laughs> That's cute. Cool. Dennis is working for Corinne. <laughs> <laughs> before, then before we end, we're going to do a quick game called Build a Wizard. Uh, now, this wizard currently does not have a name. Um, so anyone who's in the chat is welcome to give me a male name for this wizard, and uh, that most likely will be one of the options we choose from, if not just the one that we choose. I'm in chat. Can I suggest a name? Uh, yes, you guys can suggest names. Um, <laughs> beyond that, currently he is level one, and he needs to get to level... Um, <laughs> the worst. Why? <laughs> Um, he needs to get to level 13, so we're going to level him up 12 levels right now. Okay. First, he's getting to level 2, and I believe we're doing Conjuration. <laughs> we're doing what Conjuration con Wizard? Uh, um, because that's wait, teleportation, uh, right? The, it, that's what I was going to ask, because I haven't played a, a real caster in way too long. I think I was just looking. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Conjuration is a Conjuration spell. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure it Like teleportation circle all. or teleport? I think they're both count as the same. The teleport is what we're trying to get to in the end. Conjuration. Ah. Yep, seventh level conjuration. All right, so he is going to be a conjuration wizard just on the off chance that that somehow helps in the end. Big, Let's see. I think it won't. All right, so <laughs> currently his stats, as we get to the stat slash AS, the ASI slash feet, uh, he has a 14 in strength a 16 in dexterity, a 14 in constitution, an 8 in intelligence, a 10 in wisdom, and a 13 in charisma. What Sorry, do we he want... has an 8 in intelligence? Uh-huh. We decided oh. we wanted to make a himbo wizard, and oh, we're playing cool. really strong into it. <laughs> okay. He just can't cross-class. He's still a wizard. He's just dumb. Yeah, he just can never multi-class. <laughs> Me thick. <laughs> <laughs> so, would you like me to put something in one of the stats that are good, one of the stats that are bad, or give him a random feat? Strength. What does he have? ABS? Mm -hmm. How many? He has IBS, actually. That is about to say. <laughs> Gross. Um, he has a 14 in strength, a 16 in dexterity, a 14 in constitution, an 8 in intelligence, a 10 in wisdom, and a 13 in charisma. Give that lad either con or strength. I, I think would, more constitution. I would maybe? argue. I would argue in favor of Khan because yeah. to offset the intelligence, he's gonna need the hit points. Mm -hmm. That's how he's lived his whole life, baby. Yep. yep. All right. Constitution. It was. Um, I don't know where to cast the fireball, but if I cast it on me, I'll survive. All right. <laughs> We're level eight. Another either ASI or feat. Uh, I'm gonna say that one was Alex, Natalie. Uh, ASI or feet? How about a feet, guys? What do we think? I like feats. Let's make them uh... a med. Uh, <clears throat> a med. I feel like a meta magic feat would be in order. Those are Ooh, like I mean, to give him sorcery points. You could. He gets. He could get. He could get two sorcery points. And some. Meta and what? Like how many meta magic features? But he, he gets to choose two, I think, is what you get when you get it. So you'd be able to choose uh, for two out of the whole list. Huh. Um. Hmm. <laughs> that's that's interesting. I I wasn't. Hmm. 
Hmm. Or make him a chef, or give him the crusher feet, or the dark elf magic feet, <sighs> or the tavern brawler feet, if you just want him to randomly be able to throw hands. <laughs> he is? Yeah. I I like I'm the meta magic things. thing, but I, we might want to save it. I think because he is such a himbo that maybe wizard wasn't the first thing he tried to be good at. I kind of wanted to give him skilled. Skilled? Ooh. Just make him... Do you want Just... skilled and give him three extra skills, or do you want to take the skill expert and give him an expertise in, like, athletics and then, like, one extra skill? I was going to give cool. him proficiency in three skills. Since okay, he's going to he... be level 14, that'll be a pretty decent bump to okay, a bunch he, of stuff. He does already have... I can't see all of them, but athletics and acrobatics he already has proficiency in. I don't remember what else he has. Yeah, so um, I think let's give him proficiency in, like, survival. Okay. Um, uh, if he doesn't already have it for being a wizard, Arcana. Let's Arcana. See. Yeah. He has, he has Arcana, Athletics, Perception, and Religion, and now Survival. So you can choose two more. So you can choose Acrobatics, Animal Handling, Deception, History, Insight, Intimidation, Investigation, Medicine, Nature, Performance, Persuasion, Sleight of Hand, or Stealth. Channel the Kronk. Huh? Channel Kronk. So nature? Yeah. 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 Alright, nature, and he gets one more. Did you say he has he has religion already? He has religion already. Well, what if we just gave him history and gave him proficiency in all the intelligence traits? <laughs> For no fucking good reason. <laughs> He's a big old himbo nerd. Probably I, average in every way. <laughs> I was I was gonna suggest medicine for a similar reason, but I like that. Because he went to wizard school. He just, you know, he was a C student. <laughs> All right. um, we are at the third ASI. Um, uh, Evie or Grom, one of you guys choose ASI or Feet. ASI. All right. Uh, Evie. Strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, or charisma. I already did con, so I'm going to say charisma. Charisma, all right. He's a charismatic -y lad. All right. He is, now he is like playing Skyrim, and you go to the Wizards College, but you don't know any magic, and you haven't leveled up magic at all. And you're like, you have to cast a spell to get in. And you just put on all the magic gear and all the magic rings and drink the magic potion. You cast one spell and then you never use it again. And then you're, you know, you're like the Archmage. Did, it, did anyone... Oh, God. Hmm? Hmm? It's like... I am I had a thing and I lost it. Oh, wow. Well. All right. Uh, Malin, animal handling, insight, or medicine? Uh, animal handling is wisdom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all three of these are wisdom. Animal handling, insight, and medicine. Choose one. Let's let's give them insight. Cool. Insightful himbo. We love to see it. Okay. Yep. All right. He's level thirteen. He has proficiency in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight skills. Hell uh, yeah. He has average hit points, which is ninety three hit points. He has thirteen AC. And because he's a drow, he has disadvantage on attacks and perception rolls in sunlight. What's his con score? His con, con score is 13, or 16, sorry. Okay. <clears throat> With mage armor, though, he does bump himself up to 16 for uh, AC, which is not bad for a wizard. Uh, not bad for a wizard. I mean, I don't intend to put him in danger. Okay. Um, so... Theoretically, we will. I will put up a. Um, if we really want to, I will put up a vote for Jeff or Bob. <laughs> if no one wants to suggest a third name, we did suggest a third name. There is, there is no third name there, there's as far as I can read. I think there's a third one. name in the chat, Vinny. All right. <laughs> oh, it's, a great name. it's a great name. Jeff and, and it's Bob. It's a really good name, that third one, though. <laughs> Jeff and Bob are the two options, then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting up a poll in the chat. 
<laughs> That's three votes. That's three votes for the third day, Vinny. You can't. Wait. Where's this? Where is this? Where is this poll? I'm gonna, it's in uh, Twitch. In a second. Yes. Give me one I... second. Uh, all right. New poll. Wizard <laughs> name. All right. We have. I have Jeff, to go. Jeff Sorry. and Bob. Does anyone want to throw in a third option that is not Vinny? <laughs> Uh, I mean, we've we've made enough um, Skyrim references. Parthenax. Yeah. I will put that in just for the hilarity of it. Okay. Please don't. don't. Oh god. Oh no. Like his name is like super wizardy. Oh, but they're like, hey man, can you cast a spell? And he was like, absolutely no, I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh god. Hey, we need you to cast teleport. Mel, well, you taking advantage of my stream shit is going to irritate me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, wait for that to finish up. Um, oh, are... man. I'm only 100 email. points away from name generator. <laughs> um, that, yes. Was, that really we got to stall been... for another 10 minutes. <laughs> oh, uh, hey, let's suggest a poll. Oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, wizard name poll is up. <laughs> oh, look at that! Uh, there are three options. Choose whichever one you enjoy. I have a time limit. Oh, uh, where is the time limit? <laughs> Wait, where is the poll? Oh, it's yeah, up there. Yeah. It replaced. It replaced the other one. Oh, yeah. I see. <laughs> Oh yeah, man! I'm sorry, guys, <laughs> for not naming an NPC after me. <laughs> hey, Penny, uh, one of my other D and D groups did that. He named his character after me. I hated him forever, so I get, like, don't. I, I just not get gonna, it. I'm not going to deal with it. Yeah, no. I would have dealt with like Inari or Kelso, which are the name of my dogs. Before I would have dealt with that. <laughs> we should have done that. We should have done Inari. Our, the problem, though, is there's six votes for Parthenax. <laughs> well, it's the only fantasy name. Like, <laughs> yeah, you, you're the motherfuckers who did this. This is not my fault. <laughs> I don't know what you're you talking me. about. All right, we were Jeff all in on Jimmy the Wizard. All right, Jeff Bob, it is. <laughs> <laughs> and Evie's just gonna. Evie's just gonna come up with something ridiculous later anyway. Hi, my name's Parthenax, but my friends call me Bob. <laughs> my family calls me Jeff. Jeff Bob. Please. Jeff Bob. <laughs> Billy Bob's right. my father. No, Billy Bob Jimbo. Alright, uh, we have made the wizard. People who need to go are welcome to head off, because nothing we are doing from this point on is probably going to be important. Um, in the beginning of the next session, which we will figure out the date for, we will plan how you guys all meet up. If we want to go with one of the ways that it already has been discussed for you guys dragging Malin on, we can just say it happens. And then we'll head straight into the mission of you guys either going to Avali to clean up the like ever-present, ever-consuming tornado and air elementals that are being produced from this place because like at least natalie if you remember because you joined there there was like 50 air elementals and that was from like 10 minutes of it being around <laughs> wait a minute is i know that, is that another... i want to go to a volley and wait. solve the problem that is i that have another... not had a chance to fix twice now is that another basically thing like i shattered that we have to shatter uh, it's basically another dragon creature. Yeah, it's but we little... don't have the wish thread anymore, so no, we're but have it's to a like... thing. But it was the it was the, but was it like the thing that created the magma elementals, like the thing I pulled out of the goddamn lava? Uh, no, it's um these elementals, these dra dra elemental dragons create elementals slowly from their existence from being oh. in the elemental okay. plane. So they're slowly just like siphoning. Uh, their element into the world in like forms uh, which take the place uh, as air elementals for ease of use uh, meaning you guys are gonna have to face a bunch of fucking air elementals <laughs> yeah so, so we right. burn so we burn them uh, I see a hand raised from uh, Alex yeah, Lee what were we gonna say <laughs> you you look like you're uh, I'm saying good night good night bye Leo bye, bye. bye. bye.
again anybody else who needs to go because it is past 10 it's almost 10 30 you're welcome to go uh thank well, you uh but yeah um yeah so we'll be having you guys deal with the ovali situation finally um since you guys have an armada we might even say that some of the armada is dealing with like shooting down some of the air elementals to give you guys I, a fight fighting i thought chance. we only have our one ship for i mean you probably like... have like every once in a while a ship gets made so like if there's a few oh. but like okay but, and but, technically we could borrow other armadas if they want to help us you could pay yeah you could yeah. rent an armada mm -hmm. i mean is isn't this big dragon evil thing in a country it's it's in a city that is now like flattened and decimated. <laughs> oh. Yeah, if I mean if we can throw our exorbitant well, wealth at the problem, then I want like wizards who know how to recreate the thing that like keeps the city good so that when we kill the elemental thing, they can fix it. Right? We can discuss this. Yeah, we can definitely discuss like the specifics of uh, of like you getting some of this stuff. Uh, like the beginning of next session, but I will say like the thing that was holding up the the city was basically the fire, the air version of the fire elemental orb. Gotcha. That's what was making the climate nice. Yeah, that that was oh. creating an air shield around the city. Oh, I thought that was some other thing. Wait a no, minute. I, that you got broken. You wouldn't know this though. That's the thing. It's like you guys wouldn't like know yeah. that. that no, was but like... we could have. But we have an. We have artificers at our disposal too. That's oh yeah, true. You, you guys could definitely like again throw money at the problem and make another so solution. We, so we could basically pay a bunch of artificers to make a new shield. Yeah, you guys could or, definitely or like, like yeah, something. some sort of like uh, item bonded uh, control weather, like a constantly re upping control weather to like make a nice habitable zone again. Yeah. Um, but before you you'd able to clear that out, you do have to clear out the um the pests. There's there's lots of little rats running around. On <laughs> that note, On little that rats made of note. tornadoes. You mean? Yeah. 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 It's bedtime. It is yeah. bedtime for me. All right, we're going to. Uh, I'm going to quickly sign off on here, um, guys. Uh, next week is going to be a busy week for the records of the realms. We have Sunday is light arc. Uh, potentially maybe earth arc coming up soon. We don't know when. And then Wednesday, uh, Griffin, who has been my DM before, is going to be running his Blight arc, his short mini, I think, 16-session campaign on Wednesday, starting next week. And then we have the Gentlefolk Saga on Episode 3 of Season 2 on Friday. So next week is going to be very busy. Please come around, come on the Discord, hang out and talk with us. Uh, it was great seeing you this time, and you will be seeing the uh, Blaster team, uh, team Blaster together again in April. Uh, have a good night, y'all. Good night.